All right, so this is the 2023 Stampers Anonymous Everyday Release. It is uh, six CMS stamp sets. We'll talk about the stencils, uh, everything from regular layering stencils, minis, elements, and then there is an et cetera skew, and I'll talk the whole thing even about et cetera and try to answer your questions. So the great thing, of course, about uh, stamps of Stampers Anonymous, uh, it is deeply etched rubber, so important for uh, a lot of different stamping techniques. And to me, that is, that is really where I, where I thrive. I love red rubber stamps. Uh, we do several of the sets in clear stamps for, um, for the chain store for Joann's, uh, but they're like usually a, a slightly smaller scale. None of these new ones are going to be in Joann's at this time. They don't normally show up until like after a release, if you will, just because uh, th how the time works. So these uh, are only available in red rubber right now, all of these images, and I just wanna take you through. I will say that this is my set, my set that I've been uh, working with. So my sets are, uh, let me just, I, I need to ask, Mario, do you know where some, can you grab those stamp sets that are right at the end? I just wanna talk about the weeding thing real quick. So while he's doing that, let me just preface this whole uh, intro to Stampers Anonymous in the fact that, and I say this every time, when it comes to design, I don't draw, I can't, I don't know how to draw. I mean, I understand how to draw, but I'm not very good at it. Uh, so, so I license my work. Much of it is licensed for peop from people that actually can draw. Some of them are, are licensed from uh, people that sell vintage imagery. And some stuff, of course, is scanned in from our, our own personal collection of vintage imagery. So it's a, it's a little mix of everything. Uh, but sometimes people say, you know, you need this kind of stamp and this kind of stamp. And while I appreciate the suggestions, uh, never really short of ideas. And I kind of uh, am inspired by art that I see and curate a set around it. So much of this art you might see uh, sometimes even in different formats. But that's because uh, that artist that draws is in the business of licensing their work to all types of uh, different I would say industries, everything from uh, stamps to card making to all sorts of things. So just I want to preface that. Uh, this first set, this is one of my favorites. This is called Tiny Prints. And really what this one is, this is inspired by actual vintage ephemera. Um, we scan these. This is something that kind of Paula really uh, pushed me for in the world of ideology. We have many papers that have these tiny little prints. These are often found in the inside covers of vintage books. And they're just beautiful little patterns and they make great backgrounds, great texture because they're very small. So these are uh, vintage. These were scanned in and created these two big background stamps. And you'll see what you can do with background stamps. It's a lot of kind of cool fill in the blank. This next one, one of my favorites, this one is called Floral Trims. And what's really cool about this, and I think I'm just going to put let me one set in at a time to not confuse things. Uh, the great thing about Floral Trims, believe it or not, is that it's this really large, stamp that has so many possibilities. And I think sometimes people look at this and go, oh, it's a flower stamp, I already have one. First, let's talk about the scale of this stamp. These stamps are designed uh, in a much larger scale. They measure about six inches end to end. And really what the design is for, and I just kind of did these quick little stamp things just to show you a reference of these floral trims, because sometimes you don't get it. You look and you're like, oh, it's just flowers. But here's the cool thing about the versatility of this. So we'll start with this one top design. First of all, if you do an A2 card or again up to six inches, you can stamp it straight across that card and you can uh, have this design run any which way you want, meaning uh, the design could face down, it could face up, it can also be a vertical card and it just makes a really great midline design. The other cool thing is that you can stamp part of it coming into an edge. So this could be something coming down from the top of a card or it can come in on the side of a card just by using part of it. Because it's such a free flowing image, it really bleeds off to the end very well. This is the other part. This is like where the leaves are. So to me, you get two completely different looks from the same stamp just by stamping off the other edge. Does that make sense? So this again could be the top, it could even be the bottom. So when you look at a stamp like this, often we see it as the whole image. I always see it as parts and pieces. And that's why it's important to me to have very interesting elements. The fact that this is really the exact same stamp, it's just treating your eye to crop it out correctly and you can have some great variety of those trims. You can also take that and you can just use parts and pieces. So if you like to create uh, cards that are vertical, it doesn't mean that because it's a long stamp, you always have to uh, create this horizontal card. You can stamp at the top and bottom and same thing. 
by just choosing the parts that you want, this is really the same midsection. You can see here's that large flower and there's that leaf that dipped in. But my favorite thing about these that I think a lot of people don't realize is they were designed to go onto a corner, a corner edge. And what's really wild about this is that when you take a stamp, if you, and I'll just kind of mimic this one just so you can see on an A2, this stamp is larger than an A2, but if you take it and you turn it to where the edge of the stamp touches this paper and the edge of the stamp touches this, you'll create that perfect fade without it looking like it's just been chopped off. So you can, again, treat this any direction on your card. It doesn't have to be in the top, it could be in the bottom, but now it gives you a completely different aesthetic to this image. Instead of this image looking like a stripe, you're actually creating this cluster of florals just again by turning that image. So the image is off the edge here and off the edge here. So you just kind of find that sweet spot and you can bring this back as far as you want, depending on how much uh, landing space you want for the stamps. But it's really cool to see that one design, one of these two can achieve all these different looks. And the same goes for the second stamp in here, right? Different type of flower, a little bit more open, great for coloring, great for backgrounds. And you'll see how the makers did so many cool things. But again, it can go straight across that card. It can go horizontal or vertical. It has a bit of a tropical vibe to me as well. That's what it looks like if you just come in from uh, the top or one edge. This is if you do the other side. So you can see on this particular stamp, one has more leaves, one is more floral heavy. So again, depending on how you wanna treat that. There it is if you do top and bottom. So you get just different sections. And I love that because you can even isolate just one flower. And you wouldn't think you can do that on a large stamp like this, but it's just about perspective. It's always about perspective. And then you can see just those two corners, completely different looks just depends on how much of the image you want to bring in or not. Obviously, uh, this is more open with the leaves and a little bit more compact on the other side with the smaller leaves. So I just wanted to share that because sometimes if you only see an image uh, online and you're like, oh, okay, you know, that's just a, a big border. That's really why I called it floral trims. It, even though you're like, gosh, that's a huge trim. It's just because it's about trimming off the design, not necessarily uh, fringe uh, or a border, but it's about how you trim that design and where you feature uh, that particular part of, of the image, it creates a whole new, whole new card, a whole new design. All right, moving on. I'm gonna put these over here. See, I'm already running out of room. This one is a great one. I'm gonna, I'll get set up here. <laughs> uh, this one is Bold Botanicals. I love this because it has a lot of solid space. Um, and what's cool about this is that you can easily do great coloring features by stamping this in black. You get a nice uh, outline edge. The border of this is all faded, so you can see that it doesn't stamp just a straight line. It actually creates that tapered feathered look, so great for colored pencils, watercolor, all types of uh, different coloring mediums. You can do this with alcohol ink, distress, you name it. Beautiful design, and where do you see the makes? I love, I love the makes for Stampers Anonymous because the variety of style from the same stamp set always blows my mind. So this one, this I have to, uh, I have to credit Sharon because Sharon is a maker. She's always like, you need more verses. You need more verses. You need more verses. And she's right. I do, I do need more words in the set uh, when I design, but sometimes I just kind of get stuck on font choices. I, I love fonts. So what's cool about this one, this one is called note quotes. And what it is, it is a bunch of tiny little handwritten quotes, uh, great, cool font that just has a, a nice, I'll say almost like a brush stroke to it. It's really whimsical, if you will. But then it's got these other designs, a couple of solids, a little splattery circle and square, and then these little splattery frames. What's great about note quotes, and you'll see in the makes, they can be used for a lot of different things, but, but just the basic, I'll just kind of share the basic premise of the set. All of these quotes, and there's a lot of everyday stuff, you know, hello there, thanks, friends, you know, just some good things. You are my happy focus on the good. And I did throw in a little bit of seasonal because I thought I wanted to pack everything in this one set. So there are a couple of like for Valentine's Day, you know, you and me love you in my heart. There's an Easter one, um, 4th of July, there's some winter, there's some Christmas, a couple of Halloween. So you, if you like the idea of this, I wanted to already include stuff that you could use in the season uh, for different ones. But I didn't really go in uh, specifically to, you know, happy birthday, happy, because then I could just go on and on. But the idea is, is that all of these fit all of these. So you can either stamp this little outline. So this just shows you distress ink and distress oxide. 
because I know many of you love stamping with distress oxide. Uh, I'm still a purist and I love stamping with distress ink. So essentially I just ink up the stamp, spray it with water and kind of create that little watercolor outline. But you can see that on that circle frame, it fits inside. Now the splat is the same thing. So you can just ink it with oxide to get that nice, really nice blended background or a little bit of distress ink and some water and create a watercolor splat. And the splats are already part of the image. So you don't have to, you know, try to splash it out or create anything. It already creates that kind of cool little uh, messy vibe. Same thing with the square. So there we go, ink and oxide. And then the same idea. And the nice thing about that square, it is square-ish. So you can use it uh, either horizontal or vertical depending on the stamp that you choose. Because some of these you can see how they stacked up like you got this. That's a little bit more vertical. This one is a little bit wider. So the nice thing about that one, it'll fit either way. So you have that creative option. But just something fun to know about uh, note quotes in that they are designed to fit uh, with each other if you wanted to. Okay. This next one, very cool one. This one is called Creative Blocks. I love all these little blocks of creativity. Great artsy sketch. I know you can't see the top row, but there, it's just really good art. What's nice about this, again, they all have that faded edge, perfect for collage, perfect for adding that cool little element, okay, if you wanted to create in there. I love that it's got a little bit of an architectural vibe, a little bit of a grungy vibe, but also kind of a, I don't know, there's everything from script to uh, arches to buildings, uh, just some line work. These really play well in the collage uh, atmosphere. The inspiration behind this one was really about creating, I guess, almost art tiles, if you will. Something where if you wanted to just stamp a collage and you didn't know what images that you wanted to use, this is the one that would allow you to kind of create that effect. The thing about this that was also really important to me is that you can just stamp them as you will when the, you get them. And this is what I wanted to talk about on, I think I'll talk about it on these three sets. We talk about weeded and unweeded all the time, but I, I always want to include it in every Stampers Anonymous uh, live so you know what, uh, what the reference is. Weeded is where Stampers Anonymous goes in and removes the outer rubber. So when I design a set, it is designed as a set. This is my real estate of rubber that I get to work with when I'm designing uh, stamps. So I can fill it with as many images as uh, I can as long as there are specific spaces in between uh, for die cutting and all of that. If I include a lot of images, I say to stampers that they don't need to weed it because someone has to physically go in and remove this excess rubber. So like on a stamp like this, this is done on a big rubber piece like this, but then they go in and remove this excess for many reasons. One, it really helps with weight, uh, shipping, all of those things. But if it's just two images, it's somebody that can hold that, rip this off, rip this off because these are already die cut. These are die cut as well, but for someone to go in and peel this off, it's just gonna take time because they have to hold every single image and that of course increases uh, labor costs. So they are all die cut, they're perfect. So you can easily weed it or not. Some people choose to put it in. Um, they're not really designed to stamp as a background, although I know some people don't even take it out of the set uh, and stamp it as a background, but you'll see that like the margins in here are really skinny. So don't expect to be able to pull it out and pop it back in because you may rip that edge when you weed it and that's because it wasn't designed to peel off and pop back in. Um, I just, I don't do that. So all of mine, see when I get mine, I weed them. It's the first thing I do because I just like that. But you do you, okay? So the thing about creative blocks is that you could treat it as a background, like I mentioned, or you can create great art tiles. Now art tiles for me, make really quick cards and you'll see a couple of cards I did uh, from this this template piece coming up but essentially what I like to do is create a background just an inky background on whatever kind of paper you want this is the the back side of watercolor paper the smooth side so I did all my distress inks then I just take these blocks and just stamp them in the nice areas meaning the areas of color that I like so I'm not trying to line anything up you can see it's incredibly wonky because I choose the color area. I like that better that I get to stamp over the color area. Then these are sized to just shy of inch and a half. So I asked my friends at Simon, uh, so a shout out to Heidi, cause I know that Simon says they do dyes. And I said, hey, do you guys have any dyes that are just, uh, just that, that little square? And she's like, uh, I, don't, I don't think so, but, but we can. 
I'm like, I just want this one size. So this is, this is not part of the Tim Holtz line. This is, this is from Simon Says Stamp. But you can buy just a bulk pack of that size die, that size square. So I, I have two bulk packs because I wanted 10. You could also get an individual. But the great thing about these squares is that it allows me to stamp my image and then place these squares over that image, die cut them, and then you have all of these tiles. And it has that perfect little inked edge which is what I love about creating these art tiles. So these could be used on a card, these could be used part of a collage, or you could just do this on cardstock first, and then you can go in and do pencils or markers or any of that. Because most of the time when you have a specific size, because I know we all have nested dies, but you're only gonna have like one of that size. And I've done uh, tiles with Sizzix where uh, you do get multiples, I just didn't have any that was that exact size. So uh, I was really happy that that she had those and she offers those because to me it's it's important the other thing to note about this particular size if you are in the world of ideology and you've seen all of the collage tiles that we've done or the uh, panels that we do it's the same size it is that size square that fits that nine by nine uh, panel so that's another great thing about the die. that's why i like multiples because i can do them all in one pass so it's very cool if you're into creating art tiles all right so that one is creative blocks. Moving on. All right. Uh, this next one, who knew that this one was going to cause the biggest stir and not in a great way, in a, in a funny way, I guess. Um, this one is the inspector. Love him. He's great. I knew the professor needed a friend. And when I saw this art, I really loved uh, just the detail work of this. I love the goggles. I love the hat. I love the mustache. It's just really cool. And I wanted to pair it with a lot of cool uh, elements. Some little trims, I like this, claim for errors must be made on receipt of goods, great for any make or card that you do. Uh, just some random bits, so whether it's playing cards or I like this Strictly Handmade that came from a cigar box, I love the dial there. Uh, this is another thing that I got from a game, I love that forfeit move if you do not wish to change. That's just a good life quote in my opinion um, because you have to change to move forward. Uh, a light bulb, now this is, this is in the set in actually two other sizes in different stamp sets. I think uh, one is maybe the purveyor, and I think the other one is the professor, but this is kind of an in-between size. I just really like this light bulb, and I like having it in different sizes. But this is the stamp that seemed to create all the thing. It, it's kind of funny, you know, you, you release your work and you show all the images uh, and stencils and all of that, and you see the comment on social media, and the comment is, where's the P? And it's like, okay, well, obviously you're not watching many of my videos about if you don't have anything nice to say, find something nice to say, but nevertheless, um, if you're ever looking for someone to proofread your work, just post it on social media. You'll have all these editors coming out of the woodwork in minutes. But essentially, they're like, where's the P? I wanted to reply and say, well, the P is pretty much hanging out with V, uh, W, X, Y, and Z, because that's not there either. But nevertheless, this is oh all God. inspired. Uh, <laughs> this is just, this is inspired from vintage uh, imagery. This was actually a type chart a vintage type chart that had just this great illustration of lettering. I don't know what the lines mean, but I found it to be very cool. This is a piece of backdrops from Ideology. So we use this art on a backdrops paper, just as it is, still no P, no V, W, X, Y, Z. It's just a cool background stamp. It's a great typography. So this one is really uh, not an alphabet stamp. It is just typography to be used uh, as a background. There you go, someone said, Professor stole the P. Probably so, but it's just a really great background. So for those thinking that um, I missed a letter, there's actually more than one letter than one missing, letter. <laughs> but it's still a cool background. And that was really the inspiration behind it. I loved, I don't know, the architectural. I also just loved how there's just really great styling of this letter. I think it's, I it's pretty I fascinating. How many emails we got about the P. Uh, yeah. It, they weren't very kind of kind. No, of they weren't. They were, they were just trying to call me out, but that, that's okay. It's, it's cool because I, I love the whole background. All right. Next, we're going to get into stencils real quick. I do love uh, layering stencils with Stampers Anonymous because I like just having a weird little size to add texture. That's it. It's not about, you know, creating a, a big background. And there are many companies that do larger stencils. So the thing to note about these, they are designed to uh, add dimension. Now I will say that uh, when I started doing stencils with Stampers Anonymous, I called them layering stencils because they were just designed to add a layer. Uh, in today's world, layering stencils is about having like this five or six piece set that you layer one design. Uh, so just don't be confused. It's, it's really designed to kind of work independent. What I love also about doing stencils with 
uh, stampers is the fact that when they laser cut these, because they do, Matt goes in, so a shout out to Matt and Zach at Stampers because they're the ones that, you know, make all the artwork really nice. You know, Zach goes in and actually makes my really bad uh, art manufacturable for stamps. And, uh, and, I, and Matt goes in and just does this, the, the beautiful stenciling. So figuring out all these little cuts and creating all these little details uh, takes a lot of work because he has to clean up some pretty messy art. But these are all uh, a brush series. So this is brush mark, this is brush arch and brush hex. And I like this design because it does have a very messy, organic brush stroke, if you will. Okay, now the stencils come in regulation size for, for my collection and minis, a set of minis. So the large ones are individual, the minis, it's just a smaller scale. So I would like to ink them just to kind of show you the difference in, in design and scale. So here, we'll take each one, we'll take one by one. So here you can see just ink. This is just inked with some distress and a blending brush, but the difference in scale between the large and the mini. And that's really important because depending on what you're doing, you don't always want to have that large stencil. It could often take over the background. So a mini scale is really important. This is where I think that brush stroke really comes in. Often you don't see it when you look at it as on a stencil because you're like, oh, I have a hexagon. But when you see the inking part, what's left, the leftovers, that's where you get all of that cool uh, design because to me it has much more of an organic vibe. I love uh, how these stencils turned out. I didn't know if you'd be able to actually see it where it would look like brush strokes, but it's really cool. Brush arch, this is really great because this could be uh, rainbows, it could be clouds, but it could also be scales. Like it could be mermaid, it could be ocean, it could be a lot of things just from flipping it upside down. But there again, you're getting all of those weird, wonky, organic shapes. Some lines are thick, some lines are thin, and that's really where uh, Matt will go in because obviously he has to make sure it could be done in a mini before we can scale it to a big, but it's really cool. And then this brush mark, this is one that was really inspired by ideology. We did this in a transparency of just that brush mark, and I know many people are very comfortable with a brush and they can just create that little, that little flip of a brush and have a nice day. I, I'm happy with a stencil. Um, I like the fact that I can easily create a cool background just by taking my uh, distress inks and a blending brush and create this gradation of color. Really fun to do on a background. But all of these have, again, a very organic brush mark. So it's not like we just took the same row and repeated it. We wanted to create all these different organic marks. And I think that this lends itself to many things. It doesn't have to be a rainbow. It doesn't have to be color. It can still be used as a resist. It could be used with texture paste. And you'll see uh, how these stencils are used from the makers uh, throughout the, the live. But really cool. I just wanted to show you that because sometimes, again, on the packaging, you're like, eh. But when you see it, maybe that changes your mind. Maybe not. Then we have elements. And so elements was... Uh, a collection of mini stencils. So elements are actually smaller than a mini. So there's your, there's your size scale for reference. We've got the regular layering, the mini, and then elements. These are tiny little tags. Um, it's a great value though, because in each pack you get 12 stencils. These retail for about $15.99. So it's a great deal. We've done them uh, often with large numbers because I do love having these massive things for collage and art. So I love different number fonts. Uh, during the holidays, we did some words that you can put on things. And I just wanted to add to it. Of course, I'd like to add more words and a lot of other things, but you know, I don't want to overwhelm the people at Stampers Anonymous. So this time I was actually inspired by this die set. This was one, uh, these abstract elements that I did with Sizzix. And I love this look. And actually, uh, Jeanette, one of the makers, she's like, oh, I wish you would do a big die set. And I love these pieces. And although we, it wouldn't be cost effective to do these as a die set big, because it would just cost way too much, I definitely agreed that there could be a way that we could increase the size of some of these elements. So this one, this everyday art of element stencils has a whole variety of stuff. It's not everything. I did use some pieces from this, but then I also created some entirely new pieces. But here you can see uh, like the dots that's done from there. You'll see this, I think one of the leaves, but then there's some other things like we included hearts and uh, this kind of big, explosion, if you will. What's nice about these, I'll just take you through and show you these inked really quick, but when you see the makes with this, I think it's, I think it's gonna blow your mind, it did mine. So here you can see there's some hearts, and I just kinda did just different colors just so you can see the different ones. So these are all on uh, each stencil. So for example, on this one, it's all three pieces. 
Is it designed to be used like this? No, you would just mask off whatever you want to use, whether it's with a piece of paper or a post-it or your hand, and you ink that element. But I wanted to include uh, various elements on each of those element stencils. So this is just an art, but there again, it could be a rainbow, it could be upside down, it could be a cloud, some cool stars. I love these pieces, kind of some leaf shapes, some cutouts. There's a large leaf shape, just a couple of little uh, dashes. That could be good because you can create uh, a great hash mark with that. I like these little scallops, this tiny little trim that was from the set, and then these larger pieces. This one, kind of a bang, kind of retro stars as well. Some squares and some little notches, some little cutouts, a flower. So yes, you can layer this on top of this, but these pieces could be used completely uh, independent of each other. And then just some wonky square slash rectangles or cubes and then just some wonky circles and wonky because they're not perfect. And I think that that's really great. But when you look at, you know, all of the designs, let me, let's get set up here. I, I feel like I'm working in a hot mess, but you can see all the designs as, as we go through it. There's really a variety of shapes in one pack. That to me is, I think what's very cool about having a set like this is because you might just find something that you can use on a card or uh, on a junk journal or any of those things. And yeah, I, I saw a comment. These would be great for swatches. You're absolutely right. would be great for swatches. So that is uh, the element set and it's just everyday art because it's really art you can use, well, every day, whether you're needing a circle or a square or just uh, wonky pieces. So cool stencil set. All right. And then we have etc. Now I'm going to talk more about this particular skew later in the live. I just want to get into uh, the makes first, but I'll, I'll come back to this. So uh, we do have these new facades and I want to tell you all about it, but I want to make sure I've got everything set up to do so. So I'm going to set this aside for now, but I will bring it back in later in the live. For now, we got to get on to the makes. We do, we do. All right. How do we do Mario? So far so good? Okay. I know I kind of blasted through that, but that's what I needed to do. Thanks. You're hand you that. We have a lot of inspiration ahead, yeah, which is, fun. and it's good. I mean, I think that's always what's super interesting when you, when you see what people are doing with the designs and the art. It's it's incredibly fascinating to me. All right, I'm going to bring these in. I got it. I'm just I want to have the stamps close by, because I like to talk about that. Okay. So, a shout out to all the makers. If you're new to the lives. Um, the makers, there is a maker page on timholtz.com, so you can uh, find out all the makers. You can follow their uh, blogs. You can check them out on Instagram. That's where they post most of their work. Some, some have YouTube channels. Many of them do tutorials on the makes that they do for live. Not all of them, but a lot of them do that. So it is important that you follow them because that's where you're going to get the latest and greatest uh, of the inspiration, okay? So let me, I'm gonna see if I can, I'm just gonna, there we go. Just zoom in a little bit. So first up, we're just gonna talk about some backgrounds. And I tried to, as I was sorting these last night, I just tried to sort them kind of what I saw firsthand. So many of these cards use other stamp sets, but it's like if I could identify it, and that's the most important thing for me for live, if I see it, I'm like, okay, that's where I'm gonna pair it with. So this was just some really good examples of using tiny prints and in different ways. And I think that's always the important thing. So Keisha created these cards and I love seeing how these background stamps could be used in different ways. Doing an inked background and then stamping this one because on these uh, tiny prints, one has more solid area. So that's going to be all that black that was stamped down. I also love that it's uh, paired with that bold text stamp. You could ac accent it with a little Sizzix die cut. And then this one, again, just stamping, but this one is just done in clear. So because this one has more open space, I love how uh, embossing in those colors really brings out just that background color. And then you've got that embossed in white. Embossing on embossing is always so fascinating to me. Double embossing and again, die cut. But great use for the background stamps, especially if you have some word stamps or a die cut that you really want to incorporate. To me, that, that makes perfect sense to, because see, never underestimate the power of a background. That's what I think, because backgrounds are very, very cool. Uh, Joy created this one. I love how this is just done with the background, little pinches of embossing glaze, and then inked over it in black, because you can see that all the color, that's all done with embossing. I love that little, that little, <laughs> you know, I do like an action wobbler. But here's that note quotes inside there. 
So how that's just popped up and then you have some little uh, dimensional accents on there, but a great way to even incorporate like a mixed media element or just a lot of color. So you can blend a background, uh, stamp in black, you can emboss in clear, you can emboss in different colors. There's a lot of ways that you can mix up your backgrounds. These cards, Anita created these. Uh, I love just the pairing of kind of the background. So here you can see those tiny prints there. Again, note quotes. And then these floral pieces, uh, I'm guessing were created with stencils. I can I identify this one. I'm not quite sure about this, but if not, you could use a stencil to create uh, a big background pattern. But whether you're inspired by this side or this side or the whole idea, it's just a fun way to incorporate just a little print to balance out uh, a card or make. So it's fun. And these always up for fun. I got to say that she's always just like, just watch this. You know, I think that's what it is. Then we take the softer side with Paula. Yes, so, ah, there we go. Thanks, Anita. So this one, Paula went and paired that tiny print with those brushstroke stencils. So you wouldn't think like the two themes work together, but they do depending on how you use it and the palette. So here you see that, that more solid one where she added a little bit of watercolor and then used the stencil to print with. Remember stencils are not just about putting ink through it. It's also about, you could ink up the stencil, spray it with water and then literally press print or stamp with the stencil. So you're able to create a pattern. Here you can see that tiny print just in brown and then printing with that brush stroke hex. So they're really good for printing as well because you get all of that little jaggedy bit. And then you can see the watercolor floral with this. But repetition, I always say that to the makers. I love when you know you come up with an idea for a card and you just create repetition. So, because once you find your groove, you're printing with your stencils, you're stamping, you're doing your little sewing, you put it on a little bit of white wood grain, a little ideology sticker. It's, it's a great way that you can do all of this in, in a very compartmental way. You can do all your mono printing, you can do all your stamping, you can do all your sewing, and then you have your card assembly. But it's nice to see, you know, when I've, whenever I look at makes, and this is what I was saying when I was setting up, I'm like, wow, a background stamp used it's so different depending on the maker. That's what lives are all about is seeing, because sometimes you look at an image, you're like, eh, not for me, but depending on your style, it might be. And then Stacy created this. This is an et cetera tag. So this is uh, one of the, the thick tags and we'll talk about et cetera later, but just using it truly as a background. The, the inspiration for those tiny prints, as I mentioned, were background papers that we did in ideology. So to just use parts and pieces in a collage, so this is a little Sizzix die cut, you can use the Ideology Tiny Eggs, you know, very organic make, but still stamped on paper. There's also just a little bit of printing in the back, so whether you're using the stamps or stencils, it's a nice way to see the versatility of stamps. I know that for live, it's often very card focused, but we can throw in a, you know, a little mixed media piece every now and again, where stamp being the focal point. This is all about seeing that background stamp really shine uh, on that make. And I love how vintage that little delicate detail floral is. See, we need those. And that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. We need more of those kind of detailed designs for, for stamps. So that one is tiny prints. Let's clear these up. Cool makes so far. So good. See, we're just warming up. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Then I just wanted to share a couple of ideas that I saw. You're going to see that note quote set throughout the whole live, but there were certain makes that I saw, like I just really identified that set right out of the gate. And that's what I said. That's how I kind of decide to, to set it up. Uh, so this card, believe it or not, I mean, I have to say Paula, like, oh, she, oh, she did mark it. Um, Paula always surprises me because, you know, I'm so used to seeing Paula's work in ideology, but when it comes to stamps, she just likes to, she likes to mix it up. This was just a beautiful, and she did write on the back, which were there because there's some floral elements. So this is one of the, this is a, it's an older stamp, but still current because none of the Stampers Anonymous stamps are retired, but just creating a background that's a little bit more loose and botanical, but then using that circle, that ring from note quotes to stamp a pattern over the top and have it all watercolored, I think is really beautiful. And then of course, highlighting one of those notes. So really great idea for using the elements to that stamp. And that's how I, I kind of picked these out. It was just a maker, makers that used, well, elements that I didn't anticipate. So these cards Nico created, take a look at these. How cool are these? Someone mentioned about swatching. I thought this was a great stamp for swatches. 
especially after I saw his cards, because here he just took the solid splat, both the circle and that square, and then just stamped them in different colors, paired it with a, a Sizzix alphabet, a little ideology sticker, do a little sewing. But these cards are so cool and so fun. And I love the idea because while these obviously warm, cool and neutral palettes, this idea could be used for any season. You can use this idea to create a, a Halloween background, a, a Christmas background, or just any, any type of, and I even think that these are kind of like cool birthday balloons. I like little splatters, but that's just me. But I love the idea of just having uh, that ring or that particular splat as a focal point for note quotes. Because here he didn't even use that little note. He used eyes instead. It's all about the ideas, right? And then Tammy B, she's like, well, she's inspired. And, and although Halloween has come and gone, this is still a great idea because this could be used uh, for all seasons. But I can see where she went Halloween because uh, she created some really cool resists. I love uh, this whole Argyle look by using the solid and the outline and then stamping this on glossy, doing an archival resist technique and then pairing it with that particular quote for Halloween, that trick or treat. So seeing these backgrounds, Look at that with just using uh, the dots and then creating those circles and the, these little trims these are from the stencils but how fun is that with the little eyeballs boo to you great resist on glossy I, I always love this technique and then you can see with the circles the solid and the outline but how fun are these and again even if if halloween is not your jam you can still take this idea you can make uh for father's day it could be an argyle or it could be uh, americana or it could be spring or it can just be any kind of cool colorful vibe but i love how she just like i'm going halloween and i'm channeling it and i i do i love the whimsy of it but how great are just these these designs using note quotes that you would kind of already predict would be little tiny notes but in a totally different way see it's unexpected cool all of them all there. yeah it's just unexpected ideas that's why when you know because i don't like to go through the makes initially so it's just when it shows up for live, I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. I need to just I need to put those together. Because like I said, you'll see these little notes on so many cards throughout. But these really highlighted that set in a totally unique way. So well done, makers. Very cool. All Best right. makers ever. I know. Really Buckets good. out. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about um, this set, floral trim. So I'm going to share a lot of different makes using this set. But I always want to try to remind you of this set. Because when you see them, well... Sometimes it's, it's a little mind boggling. So we all know the coloring style of Alberto and he did not disappoint in this one, but take a look at this. Well, I'll, I'll say it's a card, but really it could be just kind of this wonderful panel. And it, it's a 36 inch card panel, but it's all done with those florals. And people have asked like, does that floral create a repeat? Ish. I mean, you, I would say ish, like, was it designed as a perfect repeat? No, but is it pretty close? It, yeah, ish. So if, as long as you're gonna have a little break in here, that's going to work, but take a look at that beautiful coloring. I mean, gosh, how he does that all done with distress. He did a little uh, sneak on his Instagram story where he was doing some coloring on this, but just take a look at how beautiful those florals are just colored and colored and yeah, colored. No kidding. So good. The depth of that is pure magic. And the fact that he, you know, obviously created this whole little panel piece. It's like each one is just art. If I did that, this would turn into like, I don't know, I'd probably try to get 20 cards out of that and say, look what I did. I made 20 cards. But yeah, absolutely stunning coloring. And I love the little sparkles he adds. That little white touch with a pen. That's magical, isn't it? Glorious, glorious coloring. So when, when great, he was great job. Telling me, you know, yeah. I had to ask him what's in the shipment. Yes. And he talks in centimeters and the mm -hmm. So I have to Google that to see what he's actually, what it is. <laughs> yes. And it comes out to 36 inches. And I'm like, is that right? Yeah. How is inches? that going to fit yeah. in a in a box? But yeah, it folds up. Yeah. Great, great card, Alberto. I love it. Very cool. Then we have a, a little series of watercolor cards. So Stacy created these. It's, it's always interesting. And I'm, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna hold this off to the side because I like to keep everything in camera near the end. Uh, Stacy created these. I love the loose watercolor vibe of this. And again, taking those trims, remember you don't have to use the whole part of that stamp. So being able to, even if you took a panel, stamped it, watercolored it, chopped it, and then got two cards. I'm not sure if that's how she did it, but it's certainly a way that you could do it. Uh, that you can create these smaller cards. And I love how she paired it with 
Note quotes, told you you see those, that whole little note set with the watercolor. I love the stitching over uh, mummy cloth with all those threads, little button. These are just charming cards, Stacy. but I love that loose watercolor. This is kind of my jam because you don't have to stay in the lines. You don't have to color everything. You just kind of put some color down and have a little mix of color, but I love the background. I love the grays. It's just really cool. And just that messy stitching also is, is really cool. Yeah, maybe that is, maybe that is a continuation now that I look at it. It might be. I, oh, look at that. I just, I just solved the mystery. There you have it. Look at that. It is colored and then cut into two cards. Wow. Brilliant. Very, very cool idea, uh, Stacy. I love, I love those cards. Love the, the styling of that because everyone's coloring is, is just different and uniquely them. Paula created this one. I love how beautiful these trims fill a background. So you could take that and stamp it twice. And now you have a large background with a trim stamp. So it's really important to remember about how you utilize the stamps. Then she took that oval die cut, did that little embossing with the tiny prints, a little heart, and that's just stenciled and then just cut out. So that's using the element stencil, but then just kind of freehand cut, but it gives you, gives you an idea of where to go. And then a little ideology sticker, but such a beautiful card, P. I love the stitching. I love the addition of colored cardstock. I love it when makers really embellish their cards as well and add some, some interest and elements to it because you can see how you can combine these pieces that as an individual set, you may not think work, but they do. They come together beautifully. So Cassie created this. I love a little, little grunge style. So here you can see uh, that was used on the edge as that trim, but then stamped again and then just fussy cut because these are kind of loose scribbly sketches, kind of a fun thing to sketch and then layer those on the top so it has a bit of dimension. I love seeing that note quote. So you'll see that it really pairs well with a lot of the designs and then just some crackle paste through that brush mark. So this is what I was talking about that particular stencil. Even if you're not doing color, even if you're not doing rainbow, the idea of those brush marks is that when you put a medium through it, it looks like you just kind of went in and painted, whether that's with your finger or with a brush uh, to get those pieces organic instead of just dots. So just doing that, that crackle paste, it's a great, great card. Love it, Cassie, very cool. Then we've got an entire series, of course. Kath never disappoints, does she? She always like, I love you, Kath. There's so many cards in, in the design when, when she makes. So here's an entire series and that's the important thing to remember when you're making. Sometimes we get caught up in the make of it all where it's like, I've got to sit down and make a card. And if that's really your creative process, you do you. But if you get overwhelmed as far as the whole construction of a card, sometimes it's really good to just sit down, stamp, play, color, do, do several of the same thing, then cut it out and assemble cards. So I love how these cards are so similar, but so distinctly different. So you can see here she used uh, that entire trim all the way across, but I love how these are colored, but then she went in and stamped it again on vellum and just embossed in white. Isn't that cool? And then just tore that vellum right there. So you can still see the coloring underneath the vellum, but that part is embossed in white. This is just stamped and then there's just some little uh, dimensional pen on there. But I love how that just goes all the way across. And then it's paired with the tiny prints. So it's a great scale that you can mimic the color and still have that beautiful floral vibe on that card. And then it's that kind of same idea, but instead of being overwhelmed by the whole thing, remember how I mentioned about taking that stamp and just turning it at different angles and you can get completely different looking cards by what part of the image whoop, that you choose uh, to isolate. And then you can go in and do your coloring, do your background stamping with that uh, tiny prints because you wouldn't think, oh, I can mix those florals, but you can because of the scale and the fact that we've got some open and solid. Solid's going to give you more color. Open is going to give you more line work, but really beautiful. And I like how she mimicked that whole little splatter aspect of note quotes just by adding some other little splatters to the background. So and great she cards. And a whole other bag of cards, you know, <laughs> note yeah. cards for Ted. She, and there's like a dozen more cards out there. Seriously? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. She's, because these cards go to, uh, to Stampers Anonymous and they take them to their shows. When they go uh, all over uh, doing shows, you can often see these makes in the booth, which is really great. So this card, uh, Kubert created this. Look at that watercolor. I love the embossing 
I love that watercolor. So this is just done with a little bit of mica stain. So you can see the shimmering. Talked about this in a demo where you can take those mica stains and use them for watercolor. So you can mix and match with uh, your inks, but it just gives a, a nice little sheen or a shine. I love the, the look of this, a little decal edge. Taking the decal trimmer, cutting that, gives it a really nice handmade. And I love how many people paired with, <laughs> with ideology stickers. I did as well, so I, I get it. They, they, they work really well for cards in addition to the note quotes. So beautiful coloring. Jen created this card. So this is kind of a, a no line watercolor, if you will, uh, by doing some watercolor work with that. Gives it a totally different look, doesn't it? Same stamp, but by doing no line coloring is really beautiful because it looks, to me, it definitely looks more illustrative by just doing your own uh, drawing that way. But I love how, how the coloring just really pops on this background. And then there again, you can see those brush strokes. So having that stencil, doing ink, splashing with water, uh, dipping that off, you can create a very organic watercolor pattern. That's what this is about. This is really about the makers uh, understanding these designs and totally rocking it for, oh my gosh, every time, right? Every for time. live, so cool. So Kathy created these and there's a, a, whole, a whole variety when it comes, oh, well, look at the camera. See, look at it. When I bring it close, it turns my skin purple because of all that beautiful warm yellow. I love the colors of this because Again, if you're channeling like a certain palette, so maybe you wanted to do something that's more vintage or more bright or pink or any kind of element, you can take a floral stamp and you can give it that taste, if you will. So whether you're uh, really wanting the, the warm of spring or even the vibes of fall, I love how these florals are colored very similar, but they look completely different to me because of the backgrounds that they're paired with. So. You can see up here now I can, I can hold it closer. I just love that intense, vivid coloring. This is something that I love, but I just, I, I appreciate how much coloring goes into these cards. So Kathy, <laughs> beautiful. I, I, on the other hand, can't do that. Um, Susie created this, this little tag book. So this tag book, there are elements to this floral. Um, I, I went through, so there's, there's some stencils here. It's just an, it's a number eight tag, but here you can see how this particular stamp set could be stamped and then fussy cut so that stamped and embossed and then just used as a little embellishment so using parts of a flower or in this case just parts of a leaf that can go in this is a, a stencil with embossing you can see another flower there with the leaf just kind of cut in there and just kind of cut around really and just creates a, a cool accent to a junk journal. So you can even use a stamp set, even though it's, it's really big, you can also use it for just elements that you wanted to, to add to a piece. As much as I really could, I love this, that this is just not me, but I still like flowers. And people often say to me like, why are you design flowers? Well, first of all, I like to just design whatever I see. Um, but sometimes a design could really surprise you. So this is a card I did using the floral, floral trims in my way in, in brown, in grunge, in distress. I love this look of kind of uh, the faded design that runs vertical on this card. I paired it with a little sentiment strip, little 3D uh, folder and some mummy cloth. But I like how just that, that trim is a little, little highlighted from the background. And uh, if we have time at the end, I'll demo how this is done. This is super easy. This is, you wanna talk about no fuss coloring? That would be exactly what I did. Um, another thing that I think is really important to remember when you're doing cards, is that when you're creating, uh, if you like to do backgrounds like I do, you can often use a stamp over a background. So I created both of these. This is done with the watercolor background, and this one is done with alcohol inks. So sometimes just playing around with your inks, even if you have no agenda for the card, you have those backgrounds, you can pull that back in. And I like the idea of stamping the outline and not everything is filled in. I like embracing the space. So here's just stamped in black over watercolor, little decal, trim and then some stickers over that just a, one of the metallic stickers from ideology but that's one way to use it or if you like using uh, alcohol inks same thing create an alcohol ink background and then just add your image over the top because this card could run really any way you want or it could be cut up and it doesn't have to be rainbow but it's a this is a fun way if you don't if you're not comfortable with alcohol ink um, i'll try to demo this as well just to show how you can make a background and actually care less about um, how much space it fills. But those are just some ideas. So you can see here just really a lot of different concepts for a floral stamp. You look at those, 
those trims and you think, ah, I don't really know. But to me, this is what I love about it because the style of this, that very sketch goes with colorful modern, goes with vintage, goes with shabby chic, goes with uh, bright and, and cheerful color. All types of different coloring can happen uh, just by having an open floral. So to me, one of the most important stamps of the release because of the versatility of it, really. Okay, so much inspiration. My gosh, so, so much. Cards everywhere. Cards for days. Cards for days. Cards for days. I love it. Yes, I agree, Belinda. <laughs> Two stamps, 101 different ways. Yeah, when you start turning it and all that, and that's to me is always the importance of live as well, because you see that, you know, when it comes to the live, you understand about, you know, turning the stamp and seeing that it could be used in different ways. And that's absolutely the truth. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about Bold Botanicals. It's a very cool design. Sometimes you might look at this and because you see it on the stamp itself where it's such a contrast of uh, the black with the, the gray cushion, take a look at these cards because you're gonna see uh, a softer side to this design. Even though it's Bold Botanicals, it's pretty, it's pretty great how the makers uh, incorporated this design. So this first card, Emma created this and I love seeing how this uh, has a transparency over the top. This this could be, I don't know if it's a transparency or if it's if it's the, the Duralar, but I love that it's got that shine over the top, some color in the back. And I love how she used that as a background stamp because it's a background stamp. But that's what's great about that typography is it has such a cool aesthetic to it that it works for a, a perfect background. And then of course, just doing a print with the brush strokes. I love seeing that that print with the brush stroke hex stencil in the background kind of gives that honeycomb. And then Strictly Handmade, that came from the Inspector set. But a cool combination of images to take elements from the Inspector set and then pair it with one of uh, those bold botanicals. Beautiful card, Emma. Very cool. Then these cards, Barbara made these. I love these because they're just, it's a totally different. When I picked this up, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. It's like, it's shiny. And I love seeing just different ways that makers uh, incorporate a design. So here using these, but then doing all of your, all of the coloring, and then going over this with uh, clear embossing, you can do distress embossing glaze. There's a lot of different ways that you can incorporate embossing powders, especially uh, over inked backgrounds. And then it also creates a beautiful resist. So creating these elements gives you the, the ability to, to add some texture, but also add some shine. And I love how these, they have such a great watercolory look, but also that beautiful embossed design. Absolutely cool. And this could be done, I'm not sure how she did this, but this could be done with resist spray. You could take a pen. I mean, there's a, a lot of ways that my brain is spinning, but I loved it when I saw both of these. Besides that, I love the color. I love all the mix of it. It was just such a different departure from idea to idea. Wow, that's cool. I agree, stunning. Just, it's neat. It's neat to see an idea that, that makers have with, with a stamp. It's wild to me. Needs no introduction when you see the color, but Alberto created this. I really love how he took this design that does come, you know, with a very solid background, but utilize that solid background in a color. This is what I was saying. You see that black and gray contrast, but remember if you stamp it in a color, that is gonna be your background. So it doesn't have to be black, it's whatever color you ink. But then went in and stamped it a second time and then fussy cut that layer and then did all of that shading and then paired it with a little note quote that's embossed and cut. That's some serious, besides serious coloring talent, serious patience for, uh, for cutting, but a beautiful look. And again, I would, be, I would be the cheat and I'd be like three cards, cut, cut, three cards, not one. <laughs> because make the most of your time. But you can see the idea is really nice and especially understanding that this solid, because it's printed in black, can certainly be any color that you stamp it in and then you could add uh, accents and layering on that, but really fun. It totally changes, to me, a style like this completely changes the appearance or dynamic of, of a stamp design. It really does. It changes just how I even look at uh, stamps or how people utilize these. So Keisha created this series. I love the look of this because I love how she took uh, all of the, the brush stencils. So we've got the brush marks and some of them have a little texture, a little shine. Some are just inked, but it's really 
Uh, again, taking that idea and do repetition, but I like how these are blocked with just different colors. So instead of creating, you know, dark and then highlighting or coloring each one, you're just doing backgrounds, taking your inks and just adding different colors. Maybe you have a custom DIY pad, maybe you're just using your ink pads, but I love the mix of colors on the cards that, that Keisha did. They're just fun and totally her style and very playful. And then that using the deco trimmer, a little embossing, that's a bit on the vintage side for Keisha. I'm pretty impressed when I saw them. Like, look at that little deco edge around there. But see, it's got that little touch of metallic, but a beautiful series of cards. And again, taking the stamp, because sometimes we see it and we're like, I don't really want to color. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to cut it. Oh, I don't like how dark it is. See, completely different use for that stamp just by how uh, that color is done just by inking a stamp in, in different colors. Beautiful, aren't they? So beautiful. And you can see why uh, these particular stencils, I know they seemed odd as part of the mix, but you can also see how well they pair with uh, these stamp designs. It's cool. And then note quotes, very cute. Then another card series, Juliana created this one. Uh, so here you're just taking a color. So if you don't want to mix the colors, if you don't want to add the colors, maybe you just want to stick to uh, a color of ink. Stamping that in a color is still perfection. You would think that you would lose it, but you don't. You actually create a beautiful print of that. Again, the deco edge. Shout out to the makers for loving on the deco trimmer. I've seen it used more in this live than anything. And I, to me, it's an underrated tool. I absolutely I love the deco I, trimmer. I know Mario uses it all the time. I just love it. It's very cool. I but got the I, nicest labels out there. <laughs> you do. I love how these cards are just done in the color. But then when you look at the background, the background is paired with the, the little tiny floral prints. You see that? But then it's also, I don't know if, if you can see it. I gotta see if there's one card. Maybe you see it more on the pink. But then it's stamped with that strictly handmade from the inspector over the top. So again, I'll bring it in closer. We've got the, the bold botanicals, but then there's that little tiny floral print in the background, and then that strictly handmade just stamped on repeat. Man, that is a lot of stamping to fill in that background times four. But beautiful cards, Juliana. Just a cool way to use stamps. After all, this live is about using stamps and stencils. That's what it's about and seeing how uh, they really, and the makers are challenged to do that. You know, there's, there's so many products in, in the Tim Holtz arena with all the brands, but to try to kind of hone in and, and really showcase the stamps and stencils, it, it, it just, it makes my inky stampy heart, stamping heart inky happy. Heart. Yeah, oh, it does, I know, so nice. I know. So it's like series and series and series. So Kubera created this series. Again, a totally different take. This might be something that uh, you would, it, expect more to see because of that black embossed stark area and then just adding a highlight of color. So if you really want that vivid, bold look, stamping and embossing in black really is the way to do it. Then you could pair it. I think this is from one of the, the crazy sets, I think, but I, I do love that. But look at the background. So this whole series, again, repetition of ideas. That's important that you have to remember as a card maker. Um, but I love the crackle paste through that. So just like Cassie did on her card, just crackle paste and like leave it be. If you're, if you're going to use a little lost shadow, because that is a great soft gray color to add just a touch of grunge. I'm not sure if that's what she used, but it kind of looks uh, very lost shadowy to me. But there's even a little bit of stamping back there. See, now that I look closer, because I'm looking kind of through my camera, it's, a, it's like a zoom lens. I can, I can really pick up those elements. But I love this card series and you can see how unique each one of these images are. And that's just black with a little bit of color. You don't have to fill in the blanks. You just use a little spot of color and embrace the space. Because what's really nice about these images, some have that full uh, edge, but wherever that flower ends, there is no line. So it can fade right into that white space. So whether you're cutting it close or whether you're leaving that border edge, I just love the fade, how you get that beautiful uh, transition going right into that white space. I see right, right there. Beautiful, right? absolutely beautiful and just so different from from one card one idea to the next so totally different but don't think that flowers are just for color and fun oh no we have vintage makers makers that live in the world that i do the world of brown and grunge and we're happy there uh, so zoe hillman created these love just the idea of using those little coin envelopes that's from chapter three of last year and you can see uh, this wonderful ink stamping of that solid tiny floor. So then you kind of embrace that white space and then just embossed in black. So 
the, the coloring is really done from a background stamp. By inking up that, the background stamp that's more solid, doing a little inking, stamping, letting that dry, and then just stamp and emboss the design in black, now you've got pattern and texture and that color underneath the embossing. Really great. Oh, and I love this too. Returned in forward post. I, I do love that set too. I think that's special delivery. But I love, I love the idea of, of creating just something vintage from an image that, you know, sometimes you often look at, at pieces and go, oh, well, you know, that is just flowers. It's not for me. Nope. Never underestimate the power of a design. Then we can even go grunger if that's possible because uh, Vicky creates cards uh, to the to the nth degree of the world of grunge. So these are these incredible metallic oxidized patinaed cards. So the paper has so much, I don't know, it looks like it's stamped on metal, but it, it is paper. But she clearly got great use of the texture hammer as well. But I love the backgrounds using a little bit of that stenciling. So that's where you're getting the dots, uh, some embossing, a little steel wool over it to dull down some of the shine. But take a look at these, just how they look like they're stamped on on sheets of metal just because of that that patina and oxidation so here you're utilizing uh, the really the, the palette of nature having having all of that to create this effect and how she mimics rust in a little bit of grit and grunge i took a class with vicky on creating rust and it was the most intense rust class i've ever taken because like she talks about like rust goes in this direction and it's caused from a drip that's coming it's like it's absolutely fascinating. And she, she follows rust accounts, but I mean, she does it so authentically well, but I love that. I love the metallic. I also love just uh, the idea because it is about ideas that using a background inside an open area, it's just, that's amazing to see all of this uh, idea styling design for uh, this stamp set. But look at how cool right there, like the brown, the it's, colors. I mean, it's, it's everything. It's, it's but so that's beautiful. that's the power of a live. That's why it's so important to get uh, these stamps in the hands of makers. And that, and again, a shout out to Stampers for getting it out there. And a shout out to the makers for really, I mean, they're making and they knock it out of the park. They just do them. They look at a stamp and they're like, how would I use it? And that's the important thing is how they would use an image. Because then that's why all the makers bring something totally unique to the party. It's, it's about how they would use it, not necessarily... Uh, oh, I need to do this because it's a flower and I need to use, you know, bright colors or whatever. It's, and some makers, you know, they don't use all the stamps. Some of them just say, you know, this one is a little, little too out there. But those that challenge themselves, I think they, they end up surprising themselves of how, how cool the images are. So we're going into creative blocks, but we're going to start with kind of creative blocks paired with some florals, which I think is great. So Tammy B created both of these cards. So yes, it's using the bold botanicals, but I really loved the background. So that's why it was kind of the segue into uh, creative blocks. So you can see that that creative block, you can create all of these tiles, cut them out and create a background. And it's really nice of how subtle this is, you know, stamping in, in a light color or faded color. And I love the idea of just incorporating this as a background element with the floral, because sometimes you, again, you look at that stamp set and you're like, that's too grungy, it's too, it's too abstract, whatever you're, you're thinking if you don't like it, and maybe you still won't like it, but I think when you see it paired with another image, you're like, okay, these actually become a little bit more, I don't know, organic, beautiful, because now I'm seeing you know, the fleur-de-lis and the swirls and the handwriting. I see something different in this art because of what it's paired with. So I thought these cards were, were really beautiful, and I love how people are embracing that strictly handmade uh, stamp that. from... Yeah, from the inspector. Just even for that, it's a, it's a great, great stamp. So beautiful cards, Tammy. And Marina created this. I absolutely love this. Marina is Blau Kitchen. So if you're looking for a maker, that, that is Marina. And, and I love, again, the ideas that makers really, they often channel an idea. I don't think they, I always say this, I don't think they have like this maker's meat um, without they me, have your, they, have they might, but they're like, what are you doing? I'm going to do that too. But it's, <laughs> no, it's don't. so fascinating how, you know, you can see an idea and two different makers have a similar idea, but deliver it in a completely different way. So here, I love how all these tiles are stamped. Oh, I love this paper, this paper. It's like stony, almost embossed. I gotta, we need, we gotta talk. That's really fascinating. They, it does. It looks like stone. Um, but I love the colors of this. And I also love how, I mean, you want to talk about fussy cutting. I break a sweat when there's an island cut 
I call that an island cut. Like even navigating around here with scissors kind of freaks me out. But when there's an island cut, that means a knife is involved and I start to panic. But look at that. That is some serious detail cutting. But I love how these botanicals are paired with creative blocks, right? So, so beautiful how these pieces can be combined as art tiles, because that's really what this set is all about. It's about looking at it as an art tile, just each individual creative block and how you use it, I think is what is, is most unique. Because some makers, so Cassie used uh, creative blocks just to create, she picked out three blocks that she liked, stamped it in black over uh, an inky background, cut those and then just layered them. This one in the center is a little bit higher. You can pair it with uh, some gears. That's that little trim stamp from Inspector. And then right there, note forfeit move if you do not wish to change. But cool to see uh, how you can just utilize those blocks. So as, as phenomenal as these are, you don't have to think that creative blocks has to be used in its entirety. It can be, but you can also pick and choose your favorites and then just highlight those uh, on a card. Zoe Scarpelli did the same thing by creating uh, this card using these tiles, but then to kind of bring it all together, she tied it in with a little, I mean, she kind of touched all the brands, a little ideology here with uh, the collage paper, uh, a little Sizzix, and then of course uh, inking, but then in the back, that's all printed with the stencil. But I love that, you know, even though there's all of those other elements going on, including this floral, it's these creative blocks that really draw my eye in because it adds this, this sketch interest but it works with all of the other illustration there. And of course that black stitching around the edge uh, creates a, a cool vibe. So a neat way to use the blocks. Another card that Zoe Scarpelli did using this, but again, in a different way. Now this, uh, this is a Sizzix focus, but obviously, you know, with some card makers, when you do it, you really want that sentiment and there may not be the right sentiment uh, in stampers. So here just using a Sizzix die with a heart, but it's very stampers focused in the background because you can see how those blocks are done on repeat to create a pattern paper and then layered in with the stencils in two different scales. So you can see that smaller brush hex down a little red and that bigger one in a little darker color with a little splattering. So now it's about, you know, the idea for this, my takeaway, and I'm not sure if that was Zoe's intent, but my takeaway from this is let's say you're not really a stamper. Let's say you're not really stamping and coloring. Your, your jam is more die cuts and Sizzix and you think, I don't really stamp. Stamps bring a, a whole different level to your die cuts because you can even uh, die cut through inked paper, pairing it over something that you can kind of curate and create uh, to pair with that. That to me is more magical than just uh, having pattern paper. So I do like that. So sometimes, you know, if, you, if you're not into stamps or you're new to stamping, Start out with some artsy patterns or backgrounds and pair it with what you do because, you know, even that, like uh, that, that artsy stem, I love that over the block. Just some really good ideas for that. But of course, a creative block is not always a creative block if you're Sharon because she'll take a block, and this was so clever, is the only person that did that, and I think that's brilliant. Uh, so Sharon did the creative block and then used a circle punch. So now these are circle collage circles, and I think that's so... Cool, because it totally works as a circle, doesn't it? So if, if blocks or squares aren't your thing and you have a circle punch or circle dies, because oh, yeah, 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 now I thought like, oh, hey, Simon, we've got those squares. You better get on the <laughs> circles now, because I didn't think about that. So Heidi, if you're listening, like you see this card, circle. we need a bunch of circles now. Um, but no, I, I loved seeing that because it, was, it caught me off guard because when you're used to seeing an image that way, and then I saw it this way, I was like, I can totally go for that. That's really, really clever. And I like that it's just done in blueprint sketch, sticks to a, a color and then uh, created with that, that note quote, that circle there. So clever, right? Jeez, so clever. Then we've got a card from Joy. I love the vintage. This is vintage for Joy and I'm loving it. I love all of that brown. There's a, a little, little window in there, a little shakety shake sparkle back there. But I love how she used the creative block stamp and then went in and fussy cut that fleur de lis from that stamp. That's in the, that was the kind of hidden one up there, that stamp where she stamped it and then liked that element and chose to highlight that. So here you've got that isolated cutout element, but then still the creative block stamped in the background. There's that wonderful background alphabet. See, that's what's great about it is that you can just use it 
as a that's what it's designed for as a background it's cool but i love having the extra l's but then look at this <laughs> this was very clever and you know what i think i think two makers did this because i think tifa did it as well which is surprising but i love hello cut out of that i know you'd probably be limited uh to the words that you want to use certainly with no p v w x y or z but you can still create some some cool words but i love how clever that was to cut that out uh, and place it on a card but i think two makers did that it's brilliant but cool, right, with that, that brush hex as a resist, a great collage card using stamps and stencils from a variety of different sets just to create uh, something something truly unique. That, to me, is, is what I love. No P, no problem. Yeah, there you go. So, needs no introduction if it's an, if it's an envelope, but this is Tifa, Tifa's work, and the amount of work that goes into some of these makes is always mind-boggling. But this is, it's, it's a patchwork of inky pieces, these are stamped on vellum. It is embossed. So right now you can see the design, but this has some serious bling factor. I don't know if the light's going to pick it up. Probably not as much as it does in real life, but this is like this sparkly, glittery embossing. It has some great bling quality, but look at how all of these tiles are not only cut, but then fragmented, meaning you don't have to keep it in that same size. You can just cut those in half, parts and pieces. And because it's done with vellum, I love how it's just layered and kind of almost woven into uh, each other on this envelope, front and back. I mean, that's what I said. The amount of work, stop it right now. It is so much sparkle, really. It's crazy. Oh, when you, when you you kind of see it. Go. Yeah, it's really yeah, beautiful. Perfect. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So you can see, yeah, that, it's like a, bl oh, there we have it. Oh, it's a yeah. black sparkly uh, embossing, but it really lends well to the whole collage element. And then inside, look at that, embossed with that uh, everyday art stencil, that that kapow, I don't know whether it's like an explosion, but also the star. And then inside, just a great little note, just a little note. She did a little writing on there and then the creative blocks. I love, thanks for including something. I always, you know, I always want to open Atifa's envelopes. They're often not meant to open, but now she did them so I could. So thank you, Tifa, because you knew that I would want to open it. And I was pleasantly surprised to see it. So hello there, friend too. I love that. But beautiful stamping of taking create a block in a different approach. So there again, you might be stamping these blocks on different things and not necessarily care that they're blocks. You just want to start cutting up that art uh, and layering as, as a collage element. Oh, look at that. Now you can really see oh, this. Oh, so see, right look there. at that. Oh, see what I mean? You guys have no, yeah, it's like, there we go. It's an embossed party. See that? It's like the electric light parade, thousands of sparkling lights. Okay. Okay, next up, these, now these are really fascinating, and I'm going to be honest, I'm 100% stumped, so uh, I hope Anita is still watching. Anita created these cards. I can't figure this out. I thought it was alcohol ink sparkle. I thought there was some type of gold, and then I just got lost. So these cards, I love how the creative block is used on the diagonal to create these diamonds. There's two different cards, and so this one, I'll just say, is more like earth tone, neutral, beautiful metallic. There's some metallic rubs. I do identify that. I see some alcohol ink, but to me it looks like sparkle, but then- Sparkle silver. Sparkle- Silver. That's silver. Yeah, so that's a silver sparkle cardstock. And then this is embossed, but then it must be some type of metallic pen, I guess, is where my eye is going on those. So it's just beautiful. I love, because I understood the silver sparkle cardstock, but I guess it was the, that little touch of metallic pen that just, it, it creates a whole different elegant vibe to these. Now, often take an idea, and I think it's important to also talk about that. Maybe you're not a card maker. You know, maybe you've been sitting here, maybe you're still not even here, but you're rolling your eyes going, I'm not even making cards. It's not about that. It, this can go into a, a journal. This can go into a mixed media piece. This can go into a canvas. This could be any of that. Beautiful. Yes, in Boston Black. I get that. Um, what is the gold, Anita? Is that oh, just like gold a gold? Ah, I've never seen. I've that's like old school Krylon gold leaf. That that is the thing that threw me because I'm like, I get that sparkle. I get that. I get the shine. But then it was like, ooh, but it looks leaf. Anyway, just truly, truly stunning and elegant. I love the effects that uh, the makers have also given these cards from from subtle to a color to layering to sparkle and now even. Uh, alcohol link just gorgeous gorgeous cards beautiful um sharon created this love this panel of taking these elements stamping them in black and then just going in with 
pencil, adding a little bit of translucent crackle. I don't know if I can get the camera to pick it up. It's got this really nice subtle layer of uh, translucent crackle. So it's got just that great little shattering, but I love these tiles. I also love that it's paired with, I love Start Somewhere. I love that noteworthy stamp set from the last, from last year's release, but very cool to take some pieces. Again, these tiles. So you can see that, you know, majority of the makers, I'm not sure if any maker actually just stamped this as a background stamp. They knew just to take the tiles, but that's the whole thing. You get to mix and match uh, some of your favorites because they all have something different, but I like how it was just kind of spot colored and highlighted and still created that rainbow vibe with a very artsy edgy look to it. Right. Very cool. But yeah, that, that crackle texture is also, it, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's got just some, some great heft to it. Then these are the two cards that I did from that piece that I shared at, at the beginning, right? When I inked that whole piece, I stamped a bunch of them. I cut them out and that's what I'm saying. You can just choose your favorite parts of a background. Uh, the color area that you like the best, maybe there you go. It's that way. And you'll see that like, I don't even stamp them all the same direction. I literally choose, uh, I'm not going to try to match them all, but I choose like the part that I like and that's where the stamp goes. And then the die cuts make it super easy. But I just wanted to show how you can take the blocks and just by switching your cardstock colors, right? Putting them on white and then a black card or black and a white card, easy, easy to do. So if you have no creative juju, and I know that happens, That's me. just sit there, ink some paper, stamp some blocks, die cut them and keep them in a bag. And then when you need to make a card, you can, you can do a four up, you can do a nine up, you can do them down the side. There's so many different ways. And that's also the other <laughs> kind of the play on words for a creative block that sometimes I have a creative block where it's like, I don't feel like doing anything, but I always feel like inking and putting a black stamp onto paper is easy to do. And then that's just paired with ideology uh, stickers. So again, you can see the whole variety of ideas that could be done what with creative blocks. Those little square stamps that you think, oh, they're just squares. No, they could be paired with just about anything to create some, some beautiful art. So I hope you guys are, are understanding that. I hope that's your takeaway from this live, especially seeing all the makes is the versatility of a set. Because often I'm sure even the people at Stampers, you know, they look at that art and they're like, what is that? Yeah. I know Judgey McJudge, Mr. Ted is always like, what is that stamp for? I'm like, so but I, but I think now he's, he's at a, like, I don't need to know. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure I'll learn in the live and he's right. You will. Cause that's it. Cause sometimes, you know, you don't know. It's a frightening place in my head. I tell you that it really is. So next we're going to talk about this set, the inspector. I, I just, again, I saw this design. I had to license it. I fell in love with it. I loved the detail and he was totally different than uh, the professor, but I'm always looking for uh, vintage engravings, but they have to speak to me. They do. Cause I know there's a lot of pictures, but okay. they, they have, have to have something to talk it. about the best What's email. It, all it was the picture of, of the inspector and yes? all it said in caps is not new. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a great one. It, it might not be cause somebody else might have already licensed that artwork in, in their world, but it's new to me. And I'm happy about that. Cause I really, I like him and I like where he is with this whole little uh, eclectic assortment of imagery. So this first card, this is from Juliana and I love how she embraced all of the designs, all of the images from the set and did exactly what they were anticipated for, which is really stamp, 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 stamp and smudge. So here you can see the alphabet, the, the gauge, the light bulbs. I mean, all the little text under there, the handmade, and then even a little creative block thrown in there for a splash of color and then stamped, Cut out. Look at that. I bet that's a gold pen too. Look, see, what's the thing? It's like when something happens, it happens with more than one maker. I'm telling you right now, but, um, yeah, I absolutely love that little, little glossy accents over the front of the goggles just to give them some dimension, but a, a cool way. Cause sometimes people think like, why do you pair it with all this randomness? Well, because sometimes I think the image is so I'll say odd. Some people will say nicely unique. It's, it's so odd that what do you pair it with? The more oddities you have, the better it makes that image look in my opinion. So that's really why I just called him uh, the inspector because I think he inspects all types of things. And I do love that card. Really cool. Now this one, Barbara created this. Look at that. Just look when you just change the colors and uh, how this is created. This, she cut those out and kind of layered the goggles. See, I knew the mustache and the goggles would be definitely something makers would play with. I love this. This, I believe, is an ideology. 
Could be. I could be wrong. But this looks like an ideology ribbon that maybe she cut off to match the thing on the hat. If so, well played. I think so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look. I have to look right now to see because I have one. Look at that. It is. Well played, Barbara. That's super clever. So that's just the ideology prize ribbon. That's some serious cutting. Ooh, got rid of that, if, if that's what you did. But I love uh, the colors of this that she used on the background. Again, using that alphabet, it, it really does have such a great openness to it that creates a cool vibe. And then I love uh, the ideology, those, those large quote plaques, make this journey your own. But cool, love all the texture and the embossing glaze. Fun, right? The inspector is a fun guy. Emma decided to make an Emma sized card bigger than my hand. I, I think makes need to be as big as my hand because otherwise then it's just my hand. So look at that. And I love how she created the whole playing card vibe from just those, those few little stamps that that inspired her to be like, you know what, I'm going to make a bunch of mini cards and that's going to be a background and that's going to be the whole thing about the game. So if you look at, at this guy, he's really cool because maybe he's a, maybe he's a card dealer. Could be. He deals cards. I think so. But I love how she created all those cards, stitched them all together, create a background, then created larger cards. Wanted a little ace, so she used her, her little Sizzix die. Yay for fonts that stick around because it's important to have those. And then note, forfeit move if you do not wish to change. So good. And then paired with that little uh, border. But just the additional elements of, you know, a little metallic or adding some fasteners. But a, a total different storyline for the inspector. Because, I mean, it was random. I remember when I first showed that to Paula, I'm like, is this too odd that I had all these little, <laughs> these playing cards? And she's like, not at all. I'm like, the card suits aren't weird. She's like, well, they are weird, but I think that's what I really like is, is how weird. Well, that's, you're, you'd be right. You would, you're totally right. I can't dispute that. So Kathy created this card. I love how dimensional and fun this card is uh, with the inspector. So here you can see he is stamped and cut out. I also love how she still created a collage, but then die cut it. See there again, circles. Those are the circles, but I love it. Sharon, you circles, Kathy circles. Yep. We got to get on the circles because I do. I love how it isolates those pieces that could be layered on the background. And then you have that trim. That's one of the little ideology uh, mini flares, that little star right there. These right here. I love how she just took some metallic. And again, there's that Sizzix seat. What are the chances that two different makers use that same <laughs> Sizzix font, that typewriter? Crazy. But I love that, how she created the Inspecteur. I can't really say it, but I tried. And there is a little texture hammer. Hammer those out. A little ideology tag and circles and dies. That's a whole nother thing to remember about just die cuts in general. Stamping a bunch of random ideas and just throwing down some shape dies, you get the most uh, unique art fragments to add to a card. Or, or any type of make. It's just, it's really cool. I'm going to put this one off to the side. See, I'm trying to keep them all in frame. I've learned if I try to build from here, it's good. Okay. You better buckle up, Buttercup, because this one, Nico, <laughs> Nico. Oh my gosh. Remember the time he did the clown and every, everyone just loved that crazy clown here? Yeah. He did a whole Mad Hatter approach for the inspector. So if you are a uh, a Wonderland fan, like take a look at how fun and playful uh, Nico created this card. Isn't that, you just, you can't unsee it when you see it, can you? It's so good. It's so uh, cool. But I love how he paired it with the bulb. Again, you see uh, the card suits, the, the circles, and then taking some of those uh, dots from the everyday art stencil, strictly handmade. And again, just taking some Sizzix dies here. At least he did a couple of different fonts in there. That's a label. Uh, label maker, I think, and typewriter. But how freaking wild is that? So good. See? Like, come on, Nico. He surprised me with the clown and now the Mad Hatter. But it works. Yeah. Really yeah. And to awesome. me, it's the brows. I cannot get over those eyebrows. That, <laughs> that's where you had me. Yeah. I mean, I, of course, I still love the purple goggles and lift, but it was those when brows. I, it up, I'm like, I couldn't stop feeling it. Yeah. It's, I mean, just, yeah, fascinating. Okay. I'm, I'll put that right there. Okay. Then we, then Jen created this one. I like the fact that, you know, when Jen creates cards, she creates all different styles of cards. She creates cards for a lot of different companies. So I love that she embraces uh, these designs. I know not all of my designs really kind of fit her style, but she, she goes for it. So I love how she used the inspector creating this background, just stamping in uh, the neutral grays, you know, using lost shadow, hickory smoke, any neutral. 
and then just did this rainbow watercolor for the inspector. Totally makes more of a playful card, you know, not so much that steampunk seriousness, but I, I have to really acknowledge the fact that taking a design and creating your look as focus on the good, I love how this works. It actually works for me, which is crazy because I, I never pictured him as a rainbow. I just, I pictured him, I didn't picture him like this either. So it just goes to show you that the eyes of the makers, that's why there's so many different styles of makers that make because they bring it every time. They bring it to the table and they do, they do their part. So Vicky created this. This is just another great reminder that maybe you don't even like this guy. I remember when the professor came out, there were people that just didn't even like the professor. But the elements in this stamp set are very cool. The alphabet with the missing P, V, W, X, Y, Z. The card suits, you could use that. There's some of the circles. I love how she masked off this claim. So by masking it, it kind of looks like washi tape, but that's that claims for errors must be remained on receipt of goods. That's the stamp but masking it off makes it look like tape. And I also love just the gear and how all of these pieces are layered. So when you look at this card, you would guess that all these pieces are cut out, but they are not. This card is completely flat. This is all masking. Masking, stamping, masking, stamping. And if you really uh, love masking, because masking, you can totally zone into it. It's a wild thing because from the from the appearance, the first glance, this is the only thing added to the top besides the embellishments. But you think like, oh, it's stamped and cut, stamped and cut. Nope, it's all stamped and totally flat. Cool though, right? The power of ink and masking and creating uh, illusions with imagery. I absolutely love that. Love the stitching, love the grunge, and uh, love the clips with the, the hardware. Very cool. Then Atifa created this. I didn't know what this was at first because this is all I saw and I'm like, okay, I think I'll put it with stencils, but then I felt it and I remembered that she had something in the other one. So this is like, it's so cool. The, the next few makes are really where makers kind of just went crazy and mixed up a bunch of different things. So Natifa created this envelope starting out with uh, the stencils. So if you look at those, those everyday art elements, it's very cool how if you stick to just kind of a neutral tone, it creates a beautiful background. And I get to open this. There we go. So now we'll take a look at the inside. So the inside is all tiny print. So if you like making envelopes, it's a great stamp set just to do envelope lining. But then she has this, it's almost like a folio, right? I haven't gone into detail, but I just wanted to make sure I could open it because she uses Velcro and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to tear it. But we'll start with the, the background. So that's just taking the floral trims, but doing a watercolor stamping. So the color is just done on the outline, creates a beautiful pattern. Then you can see uh, the dial from the inspector and then note quotes. I'm telling you, it's a huge mix of design. Then when you open this up, more stencil, strictly handmade from the inspector. Then there's the inspector. There's hello. I told you she, she used it also like Joycey. What are the chances of two makers doing that word? Then creating this whole little pocket, forfeit move if you don't wish to change. And then these, these are like little, I don't know, laminated yummies. It's taking that uh, bold botanical, but they're stamped in a color, but they're, I'm guessing they're laminated. I think they're laminated. It's, it's very cool. And then just stamped. So creating these uh, translucent playing cards, if you will, but then also using a lot of that tiny text to create all of these words of encouragement because they're three different sides. So they kind of cascade in this little pocket, but isn't that brilliant? Just taking, you know, a paper, this is an ideology. What's that? Laminated vellum. Laminated vellum. It's, it's such a cool, yeah, it's such a cool look. Beautiful, Tifa, because it's, it's translucent, but it's not a transparency. Does that make sense? So that, that makes sense, because that gave you the substrate to stamp on, and then by laminating it, it's really clever. But the whole piece then is uh, taking a backdrop and just adding colors or, or any of your stenciling and then just making your own little folio. But see? A brilliant way to combine a lot of different stamps and just make art with it. That's it. You know, you don't have to stick just because they're on a set. That's just doing stamp sets is my way of compartmentalizing, compartmentalizing an idea. Mix and matching, that's where, as the maker, that's where you just let your creativity uh, just run wild and kind of take you uh, wherever it is that you want to go. I'm going to kind of leave him here. There we go. Take that there. Take that there. Look, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm still going to get that shot. I can't. 
I'm going to, I'm going to run out of room. Okay. We have a couple more. We have a few more using the inspector, but like I said, these are makes, I'll probably have to clear the deck cause I have to show these. So beautiful. I'm going to clear this up and then I'll bring in a couple other makes because we had some makers again, uh, much like Natifa that created just what they wanted with the variety of designs. And I, I love that. I celebrate that. I'm going to leave that right there because I think that's really cool. So here, I love, you know, when, when makers just create uh, what inspires them. So Marina created this, this is an ideology mini clipboard and created this fun, whimsical collage with pieces. So here it, you just kind of start pulling out all the different elements. So we can see the inspector back there. Then we can see that little heart and it's kind of done on a little pocket watch. It hangs there, but I just kind of tucked it in so it, it didn't flop around. Little key, some numbers. There you can see the bold botanicals in the back. Then you can see the floral trims that are there. Then you also see that light bulb that's there, that little gauge, little register, and then pairing it with just that, that photo. I love the photomatic and then just using the receipt of good with a little label, but what a cool make super fun to just incorporate those elements. And again, you wouldn't think that this goes with this goes with this goes, but it does when you just let your creativity layer, and cut out and just create cool things, it, it will, you'll surprise yourself. I think that most of the time you just have to give yourself uh, creative permission. And once you do that, you'll, you'll impress yourself. You really will. You'll sit back and you're like, I, I did that because chances are you weren't thinking along the way, maybe it got you to the point where you were frustrated. So this one, Tammy B created again. I love the repetition of those tiles in the background. They're really beautiful. They have that great shine. A little grit so this is almost like a mosaic background you can see she used some grit paste i don't know if the the camera will pick it up but it's grit paste back here and then it looks like she used the decal trimmer around the edges those are glazed so it just looks like tile can you see that yeah you can see the the distinct break between shine and gritty grunge i love this tammy very cool but again another clipboard see we have no clipboards in them clipboards i love this I think it is. I think it's something about makers just channeling each other when they're making and creating, but I love the colors of the inspector that strictly handmade with the little fasteners, but creates great art pieces. These from ideology are so much fun because you can easily take this off these unscrew, and then it gives you the whole platform to work on. And then you could reattach the hardware, but what a, a whole different look to a stamp set that inspired the maker to just mix and match it with, different things within the collection. So for, Absolutely uh, for cool. Marina. Yes. Really for the last, it took 16 days. Yes. To get here. But it I got here. I don't think she slept for the 16 days because anytime I, I messaged her day or night, yes. she replied in seconds. <laughs> well, I don't, I, mean, I don't, she I don't blame so her. She worked so hard yeah. every day to get that here. But it got here. So yeah. you guys did it and it's beautiful. So really cool makes. Absolutely beautiful. Very cool. All right, so this one I had to clear the deck for because this, this is kind of a, this is an interactive make. So Zoe Hillman created this one. This will start, this is an ideology vignette. Well, you can see why with any of the makers, Mario, you, they want their makes here. They of put course, a lot of time into this and I love that. I, do too. I know, um, but you, you guys always worked it out. So the cool thing about uh, creating with stamps is that sometimes stamps could just take you uh, into a storyline. And, and when this first arrived, when I saw just the photo, cause the maker sent us a photo of the make, I just assumed that this was a panel. I didn't realize this was like, well, what it's about to be. So uh, pretty unbelievable to see how interactive things can go. And I can only say that, you know, Zoe, Zoe was inspired by this uh, and the name inspector to create kind of this whole uh, postal thing. So we start with an ideology vignette tray, but even the paper is all done with stamps. That's the power of stamps that you can make your own pattern paper, just getting out your ink pads. You can start with neutral uh, background and just go to town and create your effect, create all of your, your trim, use your die cuts. These are et cetera trims. And then we've got the inspector here and the background. This is just an ideology backdrop. So even if you don't want to create the neutral inking, that's the great thing about the new ideology backdrops that we have in those colors. There's your foundation and off you go. But this has a little hitch fastener. I kind of put my finger on there and just pop this open. And where do you see what's inside this? What look at this. So first we've got uh, that great little print. Now it's not meant to be a repeat, but you can see that stamped three times. It still has great repetition values. 
but I love how she created this whole little postage thing. If it stands up, there's a little pin. I'm gonna try to not have things fall over. But these little tags are hanging off of a loop pin uh, from a little screw eye in there. There we go, I'll show you in the light. Um, but what's, what's unique about this, it's so many little great ideology things mixed with stamps. So here's a little test tube. It's got some pen nibs in there. Uh, with service, you've got little cork vials for ink. We've got this whole little stack of envelopes. So just making envelopes, just for the art of it, right? It's not, it's not an actual stationary set that you could work with. I suppose you could create one like that if you wanted to, but this is just for the art of it. So uh, die cut the envelopes, maybe stamp the back of one and the front of that and leave the ones in the middle blank, right? I don't know if she did or didn't, don't need to find out, but there, it's a great way that you can create an embellishment, a little string, a little wax seal, which is also uh, fabulous, but using those images and then creating this whole assortment as well. These are all done with the chapter three dies that we did last year, the little envelopes, the coin envelopes. But there again, taking these and doing the stamps and coloring. So she has a whole little series of uh, the inspector all stamped. So I don't, I'm gonna slide this off. I won't open them, but I just wanna show like they are stamped. So taking that and just stamping in color, stamping color, this could be something that somebody actually you know, uses to send little notes. And I love the details, even all the stamps on the back, just done and cut and layered. It's just a lot of work, but absolutely beautiful to take the stamps and let them create the story. Just let it go where you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use these papers. I have this from ideology. These little dividers in the trade, these are all the et cetera. So we'll talk about et cetera uh, a little later in this and you'll understand uh, how these can be used to actually divide uh, this tray or use for ledges. But isn't that just, it's a fabulous make, but it really stands up. So the test tube sits there and all of these little stamped tags are looped on that pin. Little claims and service, this is brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant make and all just tucked back in there and then pop close. And the inspector, wow. he spent wow. five extra days at the convenience market so, in Denmark. So see, Mario's gonna have a story. He'll have the story of all the makes of where they actually live. Five but days, he's yeah. still, he went to the market. But he got here, he got here in time, which I think that to me is the best. Yeah, to market, to market. Okay, beautiful make, Zoe, I love it. All right, we've got a few more makes, then we're gonna talk about et cetera, and then we'll see uh, if, we're, if we're still holding up for some demo time. So these, this last group was really about um, makers that I felt focused specifically on stencils. It doesn't mean they use stamps, but when I saw the make, I was like, okay, that's totally stencil, and I loved the idea of it. So this first one, Paula created this, and I have to say, she told me about this make. She was so excited when she made it, and I was so surprised, really. Paula doesn't really love card making. She is definitely more ideology, but this release she's been making, and if you've seen uh, all the the extras that uh, her and many other makers have already been posting on Instagram, in addition to their makes, just making, making. Uh, and, and Miss Ellie, she also made some great tags. If you saw those doodle tags on uh, Paula, I shared it yesterday. So a shout out to Miss Ellie, because she is an amazing maker as well. So this book Paula created, but take a look at this accordion book. Absolutely charming how, uh, and I'll, I'll give you a closer look, but again, a wonderful, cool, make so if you want to just get some paper cut it up and just start playing you can make a charming accordion book so here we start with the background so the background of course are the floral trim stamp you even see some of those tiny floral prints and then taking those everyday art uh, stencils just those elements the dots the leaf here she did the rainbow but then cut it out easy to do because it's wonky you embrace that anyway um, and then doing a little die cut and some stitching and then just as you go it's just you kind of carry on the story. So there's more of the stamping. You've got some clippings in there, little doodle work. I love the colors in there. I love how she incorporated photos. So it's very much still Paula, right? The touch of those vintage photos, but just a little bit of stitching, clipping, and again, florals. So you've got the outlines with the little prints and then all of these stencils. So even these cutout pieces, these are just stenciled and then hand cut, but then really layering the stencils as a stencil because after all there's a stencil and then that little scribbly black line if you have a stabilo those are great for that because it's a really intense uh, water reactive uh, pencil but you could use distressed watercolor pencils but a stabilo is going to give you i think more smudginess but i also love just how whimsical some of these elements are right golden gem sat atop her head and i love how she just added a little bling to that photo booth and then added 
just that little touch from the stencil and then cut out. And maybe, maybe you don't want to do any of the cutting. Maybe you have the die set. So now you're going to do some stenciling for the, for the large elements, and then you're going to die cut for some of the smaller elements. Maybe, you know, you have a lot of creative options, but how fun and vintage and whimsical is, is this? So cool. I love all the little stitching, the hearts. Yeah. As soon as she she's like, oh my gosh, so much fun, so much fun. Oh, that's foundry wax. Look at that. Well done on the foundry wax. That's tiny little dots. That's a great use for foundry wax, little metallic. I need to try the foundry wax idea on what Anita did. See, inspiring. So inspiring to just see how a maker takes something and just like, this is how I use it. And that's what I hope you're inspired to see um, throughout this live, really, because to me, it's fascinating. So Kath created... Uh, this series of cards, again, Kath, just card after card after card. And now that I know you even did more cards, but take a look at these because the focal point of this is stencils. You know, sure, there's, there's some stamps for note quotes, but really all of the elements are stencils. So you have in, in the orange, that's going to be your brush mark. Then you've got the squares from those element stencils. You have the flower that's stenciled and then cut out. You've got the leaves, but then you've, you have it over some script, whether it's stamped or whether it's um, backdrop paper some splattering with some embossing and then note quotes, but then you just kind of keep going. So once you have your inks out, uh, when you ink that, you flip it over and you make a mono print. I'm not sure if that's how she did it, but you totally could have done that. Do the mono print so you get the reverse of that stencil, then do some stenciling of the dots, then taking those stars, stenciling, but then cutting them out. Because of that organic design of the stencils, I'm, I have to say I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised of how many makers really cut that out but that just shows that because of the maybe the loose design you don't have to be as as particular but it's really more of an accent over what the stencil is designed to do which is make beautiful prints and i love uh, how that's paired with note quotes and then you've got this you've got that flower put on top that one i totally recognize the flower and that little leaf you've got the dots a little print from the brush hex and there we go the positive and the negative so inking through that and then because you've inked it, if you missed your stencil and then just print it, then you get a, a whole nother use out of it. But great, great use for uh, stencils on cards, right? I think that to me is really good when you have all of those. Then this last one, I, I still just, I'm so impressed by makers and how they do this. And I know Sharon is a very busy person, but I only hope that this becomes, because when I told her, when I saw the photo of this, I'm like, did you make all those? I only hope that there is some tutorial and just kind of a breakdown because I figured out most of them, but I can't figure out all of them. She actually went in and created an entire card series for an entire calendar year of themes using that stencil set and note quotes. That's it. These are, these are the designs. So when you see the designs that came from these stencils, and the text all came from note quotes, because as I mentioned, there are some all little uh, notes in there. So for winter, she created the snowman, let it snow. So I get it, that's the circles. Totally understand that. We've got uh, all of the hearts. I love how these are all layered. And again, because you have three different hearts on that stencil, inking and layering different colors, isn't that just fabulous? So good. This one, this one tripped me up. I did figure it out, but uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but I, I was determined to be like, how did she create a clover? Um, but it's absolutely fascinating. She went and did the coloring with distressed watercolor pencils, but I love how she created clovers out of elements from this set. And she's got a little good luck card for St. Patrick's Day. April shower, she's got focus on the good. So using that drop, just kind of like raindrops. Sure, there Fabulous. Be a tomorrow. Oh my gosh, you're a rock star. I just can't, I can't wait to, it's almost like I, I just need to see the map, you know, what was done with what, because I, it's just brilliant. All the ideas. Look at this one. You are my happy. I love, I totally understand. I recognize the flower, but I love how that flower is done and just that little yellow dot in the middle. And then just over that color background, the rainbow. Hello there. Very cute. Just taking your pencils through a stencil because distressed watercolor pencils, lay your stencil down and just draw through the stencil uh, with the pencils. Oh, that rhymes. And then just watercolor. There you have it. And then this, see, kapow, just bang, like fireworks for 4th of July. I didn't think of that. I was definitely more in the Batman mode, but I love seeing this as fireworks with that little bit of 
of paste over the top and some glitter. Totally looks like fireworks. So, so great. I love how this has created a cake. So fun to, to create with those squares and then use the trim and do a birthday cake out of that. Make a wish. Yeah, I saw someone say for kids, great for that because you just, using your imagination for shapes is just wonderful. And I also like that really, like as I go through each card, you can see that she just kind of like, I'll use oxide for this, ink for this, pencils for this. Oh, I'll add some uh, embossing glaze. I'll do some texture paste and just create all different effects just with the, the same idea. So you have shine bright with the stars. Look at this one. So fun to take those circles to make pumpkins, the sparkles that I said were little retro stars for the eyes of the jack-o'-lantern, the mouth, and then it just sits there for a trick or treat. I mean, come on. Then taking all these and creating fall, fall leaves, many thanks. I mean, can you see what I mean? Why I was just like, I don't even, I can't even wrap my head around how just the cleverness thinking. And then Christmas, would have never thought that that, that leaf is Christmassy. But now that I see it, total. Could be mistletoe, could be holly. And I love how it's just done with the different colors of, of green with the splash of red and those, that little metallic splattering for holly jolly. And then making gifts out of two of those uh, squares to do merry and bright, the little stack of gifts. And these lines, I'm, wouldn't surprise me. I'm sure they're the stencils that are those, just using those as lines. So even if you think, oh, it's pen work. No, it, it's gonna surprise you. Maybe the dots are, but the shape, Brilliant, but like an entire card series through the year for stencils that really have like a mixed media vibe, but the makers say otherwise. That's what I think. The makers say otherwise, just seeing how they could be vintage shabby, they could be, you know, great for artsy uh, model prints and backgrounds, and then can be totally uh, isolated to a specific theme. Mind boggling, all right. So again, thank you makers for really just rocking it. Just did absolutely amazing things. Right, Mario? Amazing. I mean, like, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out any of those things that Sharon did. You know, I was flipping through the stencils trying to understand it. <laughs> I couldn't get it at all. It's, it's unbelievable. It really is. All right. I've got, that's it for uh, stamps and stencils. We're going to get into et cetera. And then uh, if you guys stick around, we can do a demo. But those were the makes for the stamps and stencils in particular, but one of the things that is also part of this release uh, is et cetera facades. And what's interesting is uh, when this was announced, a lot of people like, this is the first time they heard of et cetera. They're like, oh, what is this? Et cetera is actually part of a, a big line for Stampers Anonymous that I've done with them for several, several years. So I'm, I'm gonna take you through a little, little stroll down et cetera lane and we'll talk about it and then we'll get into uh, what the new facades are. So the et cetera line, actually is composed of tags. It also has uh, a bunch of, of different trims and cuts and has even inspired a die set. So what Etc. is, is it is made out of thick board. So it's artful things for curious minds. This was about creating a substrate uh, that was cost effective, that uh, was made by Stampers Anonymous. So it's done in, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, but this is a paper board. So when I say paper board, um, this is actually the thickness I don't know if you can see it there, that uh, without a reflection. That's the thickness of, of et cetera. This is not meant to be die cut. It cannot be die cut. These are actually laser cut. So the tags, it comes in many sizes. So we start with uh, number eights and, and depending on the pack, you get a different count, if you will. So the number eights, you get five pieces. So you actually get the tags and you get the reinforcers also out of uh, thick board. Then in the mini tags, the mini tags, you get four of them. So it's bigger than a number eight, but still a really small size. This is what you see most makers uh, use for makes. Then we have small, so small you get three of those. Same reinforcer, everything is to scale. Then we have the medium, <laughs> it's a pretty big, you get two of those. And then we have large, which you probably haven't even ever seen in a live, I'm not sure, but this is a big one. This is great to like do a quote, maybe you wanna use uh, your Sizzix, um, like bold text and just create something really big like with billboard uh, and create something on the wall. But what's nice about this substrate is you can collage on it, ink on it, uh, stamp on it because it is a paperboard, but it's very durable, but also incredibly affordable. So that's the cool thing about 
uh, et cetera. So these are what you see as the foundational pieces. But then in et cetera, there's also uh, some different designs. So we, we launched these at, at Christmas time where it's this great cathedral window. There's actually two sizes. So you get uh, these two smaller windows and this large one. A shout out to Matt, because Matt's the one that figures all of this out. He figures out how it fits and how to laser cut it. And these are all done with a laser cut. So when you get it, you see this little like soot? Well, it's actually soot from the laser. So you wanna wipe them off. It'll smell like a campfire, but it'll go away. But just know that it is laser cut. So they do their best to clean it off. But I always recommend if you're gonna ink or paint, just wipe it off with a dry cloth first. I love those windows. These we did for Halloween. Uh, I love the spider web trim and the bat. These are just great to add to uh, dimensional projects. And you get several sheets of these. Um, I love the et cetera. Some retailers have enough stock to sell these year round. Sometimes they sell out for the season. Then we have these trims. So this is what Zoe used in that tray to create that divided thing, the et cetera uh, trims, because you actually get three sizes, two different, I'll just say thicknesses, I guess, but, but different lengths, but you also get multiple sheets of this. So when you're getting five sheets of, of each one, and the nice thing is, is that you can utilize these trims because can you cut them with your scissor? Eh, you can. Um, I recommend either using a, a craft knife or if you have like a mini hacksaw, it goes really quick. You can cut them that way. Um, if it's really small, you can get away with your scissor, but if it's too big, I wouldn't recommend it. But what's nice about these is this one is, is just the scallop. This one is bracket, so you can kind of see the design back here. It's got that little scooped bracket. And this one is a cool little pinked edge, a little ziggity zag. So these are nice because they can create ledges. You often see these ledges done uh, in ideology. Emma uses them a lot. Well, actually most makers use uh, a lot of et cetera with ideology because it allows you to build shelves. The whole idea behind these is that you can stack them and create a shelf or a ledge to build on, uh, or in Zoe's case, uh, dividers. Now these three SKUs, these trims, actually inspired a die set that I did with Sizzix years ago. It's been retired, uh, sadly, but it's a, it's a cool set. It's just these, it's decorative trims, but what these are, these are the dies to fit these pieces because makers were collaging paper you know, using backdrops, and then you have to go in and like fussy cut or file this off. And it's like, Ugh. so I'm like, ooh, well, if I just do a trim die that fits, then essentially you can take any of your papers. Take a look at these. I just like to make them in the bulk. Um, you take your papers, die cut them, glue it on with collage medium, and now you have no cutting. So now I have all these little printed trims be that rulers, ruler edge, or cigar labels. This is all uh, ideology. A lot of the paper is memoranda, Please all sorts of cool things. not to use the rotary trimmer on these. Yeah, do not use the rotary trimmer on these. These are thick board, these are laser, laser cut. cut. They are laser cut, so they're not meant to use uh, with a trimmer, a die cut machine, or your scissors. It's laser. At best, you can you know cut several layers with a craft knife or a uh, blade, but yeah, it cannot be cut with the rotary trimmer. The rotary trimmer can cut up to, uh, as I mentioned, 0 0.05 uh, chipboard, which is not this. This is way thicker than that. This is, um, well, this is probably an eighth of an inch thick. It's kind of like yeah. wood. I mean, yeah. Can... yeah, they're really strong. So it's thick board. It's not chipboard at all. So it's really important to know that. So thanks, Mario. Um, but I love these designs. So if you have this die and you didn't know what it was for, yeah, you can cut paper trims. But if you have et cetera, then you cut them and they fit and off you go. It's really, really cool. Okay, so with that, with the whole et cetera line going, I was like, I wanna kinda do something new, something different. So I had this idea to kind of create um, a facade, really. It was inspired by uh, the vintage clocks that I got from uh, the Junk Girls in California. They have an amazing shop, but they had this display of these uh, old clock fronts on the wall. And when I saw it, I'm like, that's so cool to kind of see this uh, facade. So I talked with Paul, I'm like, you know, let's talk about this. Let's kind of figure out how we can uh, bring this to the et cetera line that makes the most sense for all the brands. So here's the cool thing about uh, what the facades are. The facades, and again, I will say it probably three or four more times, a shout out to Matt because Matt had to do all the math on this and he had to figure it out many, many times. We went through many versions of this. Um, but it's perfect now. And so thank you, Matt, for all the work of really going back and forth. And I mean, we're like, can you make this a little taller? Can you make this a little squattier? But now they're perfect, okay? So that what you get in this pack of facades 
is you get four facades and 24 stacking strips. So what that means is you will get four different, I'll just call them fronts or facades. Each one is laser cut out. So this piece is extra, but because it's being cut, there's no reason to throw it away. But these were about creating these facade windows, but it does give you these cool pieces that you can use for other things. These can become their own collage pieces as you will. They could be layered on stuff or whatever. Then you have these, these are the stacking strips. They're just layered things that just, you just push them out. They're, they're in here. Uh, they're just kind of held on by just tiny little, little pieces at the end. You can see a little soot on my finger, but you can just pop out these little pieces and they become these stacking strips. So what these facades are designed to do, they're designed to work on a few things. They're designed to work on the et cetera tags and the sizes they are designed to fit are the mini and the small. Now you can go bigger, of course, but it doesn't fit on the number eight. So mini and small, and you can use these on top of these to create a facade or a frame. So that's where these stacking strips really come in handy. Let's say I wanted to uh, layer up a piece, maybe it was this frame. I can take these strips and you just glue them together with collage medium and you can either stack them high like that, right? Really skinny, stack them up high. So you can create that whole little shadow dimension. Uh, or you can just, if you want it kind of in between, you can do it wide. I wouldn't waste them like that. I would only just use the skinny piece. So if I only wanted a little bit, I would just do one stacking strip and you glue it to the back, you glue it on. And so you can create your own uh, shadow box with this. You could go all the way around if you want. You can cut them at angles. You can really do whatever you want. These, uh, they are a little bit thinner. So these could be cut with a scissor because it's just a quick little notch cut versus chop chop. So I've shortened these with scissors. Uh, my tonic snips work great. You could also use wire cutters. But these will build a lot of different frames. In addition though to the et cetera tags, I wanted them to fit the world of ideology. So for ideology in the vignettes, we have vignette square boxes and the regular vignette rectangular boxes. They will fit the two larger sizes of both. And what's nice about that is like this guy. So they're all kind of different widths so they can fit each one. So this one, the small one fits right over that vignette. And what I love is that it's going to take a square box, but if you created something, now you have a shrine. So you have a place to decorate, you can create an arch with it, you could have it upside down if you wanted to have an embellishment there, but it takes this shape and gives you a whole new design to work from. Blur. Really cool. And you don't need risers for this because you're putting it on the box. The risers, uh, the stacking strips are really for something flat. Not saying that you can't, but you really don't need to. Then if you take this other rectangular box, now we can take, I think it's this one, yes. We'll stack that up. So now you can put that right over there and now you've created like a little house. So with these two vignettes, you've created uh, two distinct different facades or looks. Think of like Main Street USA, right? Where the fronts of the buildings are all this, but the back is just, it's a building, right? That's the whole idea. The other inspiration, so there's always something inspiring about going to Disneyland as well. Then we've got these and I love these because I wanted to create stuff with the squares that really kind of threw you through a loop. So this one is taking a square, cutting a circle, but also uh, creating an arch top. So this totally changes the look or the appearance of a square vignette. So all three of these are designed that if you create that facade, you can stand them up, you can utilize them uh, just as a sitting piece. This one, I wanted to do something totally dimensional because I wanted to see if the idea would work because if it worked, then maybe we do it for seasons or whatever. But I love this shield shape because the shield, you can see like right from the tip to that little edge, that's how Matt just dialed it in so perfect, fits that square box, but now I have a shield shape. And that shield is so cool because you can hang it on a wall or you could mount it to something else. So you could still do a box if you really wanted it this tall, you could still put a facade on a box on a tag and really create a whole piece of art. Cool, right? Neat, neat, neat. So that's really what the facades are designed to do. Of course, they could be used any which way. You could just glue it down on something and, and be done with it. But that was the inspiration behind the facades is they fit uh, 
the two larger boxes of the vignettes and they also fit a couple of the etc tags so getting these dialed in right at the at the end was super important so we we're able to rush them out to a couple of makers four makers uh to just make a sample of of each for live so shout out to really to stacy paula emmy and T emma and tammy b emmy. emma and tammy b for creating these so quick so let's take you through and talk about uh, the facades. I know I do. So Stacy created this one. So here again, we, now you can kind of recognize how it works. Yes, a vignette box and then creating that design. But this is what's so fun about the facade because now you have something that will sit up and gives it a totally different look. Isn't that fun? Adding some stamps, some stitching, a little uh, ideology ephemera, some paper dolls. There's a metallic impresslet, a little seal in there. But isn't that just a great way to make a quick shadow box, but something that's just not square. That's the nice thing about a facade. It changes the, the dynamic or the appearance of it. Then Paula created this one. So you can see that, you know, does this fit on a vignette? Yes, you've seen it, but it doesn't have to be. You can use uh, those stacking sticks and just create a nice dimensional frame on something else. So you can start with the etc tag here you can see the ideology collage strips in the background uh, love the the use of the photomatic little quote chip some little adornment keys some some string and some little trim i love those new uh, adornments but a beautiful make but now because you have that facade it's a nice foundational piece to go over the top of it and these pieces I mean, they're simple enough because I'm sure someone's going to say, are you going to do a die for these? I'm not going to do a die for these. One, because the die would be way too big and too expensive. But also, uh, these shapes are simple enough that if you glued it onto the paper, you could just, you know, lay it face down and then go in with your craft knife and trace around it. So, I mean, Paula did cover this in paper. So you could just go in and do all of your, your trimming that way. So, beautiful. Then Tammy B created this one. So this is taking, uh, like I mentioned, a facade on a box, on a tag, and creating this whole little uh, garden shed. And I love just the, the stamping of the papers, the little elements, so you can see the et cetera trims in there, creating little shelves. Uh, there's our salvage rabbit. I love the crackle on there. Look at these little topiaries out of the thimbles, those little balls. Just a fun little make, and I love how she utilized the strips to create a little crate. Just really clever, a clever way to, again, incorporate the elements, but now instead of just having a rectangular vignette, adding that facade, now you've made a, a little garden shed or it could be a birdhouse, it could be, well, it could be anything you imagine, it can. And then we have uh, this shield that Emma did. So here we have the, I just love this design. The shield, I love how she uh, layered it. That's gonna be the ideology, the transparencies where we've got the printed transparency. I love that, that compass wheel, I love how it fits. I would like to say I did it intentionally, but that'd be lucky. Here you can see again the et cetera trims just stacked. So they don't always have to be a ledge. They don't always have to be a shelf. They could just simply be. Uh, and I like the idea of just adding uh, that stitched element. It's always cool to see sewn paper. So this isn't sewn to this, by the way. You just sew the paper first and then glue it down because you cannot sew through uh, et cetera either. Even if you see these little edges, she sews the paper first and glues it down. And then those ideology uh, adornments, just beautiful and that paper doll portrait, but really fun. I mean, I, I love just, just the variety of the ideas from these makes. I'll try to get it in camera frame. I can try to zoom out a little bit, but uh, very cool. And I think that's what's really nice about the facades is whether you're uh, creating shadow boxes or whether you just want uh, a little dimension or lift on your make, it's just really cool. I do, I love them, I love them. So that's the et cetera. Whew, okay, let me move these off to the side. Take, take a look. Yep. That's not bad at all. Is my watch right? Has that only been two hours? Two hours and nine minutes. Wow, we have, really time. we have time for a demo. Demo time. All I'm right. Demo for the win. Whoop, whoop. Woo, woo. Um, I've been trying to watch the chat, but most of you guys are just throwing out compliments. And so I appreciate that, that you're throwing out the compliments to the makers. I think it's really important. All right, cool. Let me, got my mat. I think I'm okay. Um, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to talk about some stuff. I don't, I mean, I have to say, I don't have like an official demo demo planned. I just have some stuff to demo uh, and hopefully continue on with the ideas 
uh, to share. So, okay, I've got some, I've got some stuff. So first thing uh, I'll talk about really is just some, some backgrounds, because one of the things that it's so important to understand if you're, even if you're a seasoned stamper, uh, or if you're new to stamping, the importance of backgrounds, because I often feel that when it comes to uh, budgets or people buying, they often overlook background stamps because they just think like, oh, it's just a background stamp. The thing about these is when you have a big background stamp, it does allow you to introduce texture and design to many things. You've seen in the makes backgrounds on cards, on tags, uh, in books, and you can utilize backgrounds, uh, not just the entire stamp, right? So you can put this on a block and you can stamp, but you can also see like in certain areas, like how Stacy uses it. I often go in with the background and literally hold the stamp in my hand and just kind of fill in with different areas. It's very easy to do. You often would think that, you know, if you, if you stamp like this, you don't really get uh, great results, but you do. And it depends also on what you're creating. So I'll just take a little bit of just distressing real quick, just throw this on here. And I could spray this with water if I wanted more of a watercolor look, but just taking an inked stamp and holding it in your hand and actually forming, forming the stamp. So you're creating a bend and just pressing and kind of rolling in just different areas, you can create just a pattern into an area. So you can create an organic edge in this. The nice thing about any kind of background is the ability to do that. You can re-ink areas. I'll, I'll do this next one with a little bit of water just to show you. Um, probably won't be the greatest on craft, but I'll still give it a whirl. So let me unlock this. There we go. Come on, get going. There we go. A little bit of water. I'm just spraying that stamp so I don't spray my paper. I'm trying to spray it off camera. So I've got a little bit of water there. Um, but same thing, you could just go in and you can just add uh, some great stamping. And often I'll just kind of trail it. I'll do, you know, a few stampings and then we can dry it. Just so you get the idea for any kind of background, it's a fill in the blanker, okay? Whether it's polka dots or flowers or whatever that is, sometimes people see background stamps and assume that you have to stamp that rectangle every time. And the truth is you don't. So whether you stamp it kind of detailed, even if you overlap it, it's okay. Or you create kind of a watercolor by not having it on a block, it, it will give you more of an organic edge. That may not be your jam. You might be comfortable tearing and masking paper. You can do it that way too. If you want an edge, maybe you want to tear a piece of cardstock so you get your organic edge and then just stamp with purpose. That's fine too. But it's just to kind of remind you about how you can utilize background stamps. Just totally totally different. Okay. So I'm just going to wipe this off, place this back, and we'll talk about another cool thing that you can do uh, with background stamps. One of the things that um, I was inspired, and I was inspired by Stacy doing this, gosh, this was, I don't even know now, it's been a couple years, maybe a couple years. I think I've shown it for holidays and I've shown this many, many times. So here's the thing that I'm just going to say, because well, I'm unfiltered and I know right now Mario is probably grabbing onto the table. When I do uh, demos, I do demos according to my agenda and not someone else's. So if you've watched a live and you've seen me demo something in a previous live and you've seen it again, that's okay. Um, I don't need to be reminded of that because I'm, I'm aware that I like to repeat demos because I believe this. I believe that seeing something time and time again will help engrave it, in, engrave it into your mind. I think a couple of the things is sometimes people see an idea, but they're not ready to embrace that idea. They see it, but it's not relevant to them at that time. And they see it again, and they're like, that's really cool. So it's very important to see stuff again and again and again. And if you've already seen it, you can just maybe watch replay and kind of skip over that versus live. But um, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for doing things in repetition because I've been doing this for 20 years and I still am fascinated every time I see embossing powder melt, I can see someone stencil and still pick up an idea or a technique. So the cool thing about an idea is sometimes a new image, or in this case, uh, a new stamp will come along and make you go, oh, I totally remember that idea. So these stamps are anything bold. It doesn't have to be, let me get rid of these little guys. It's really about these bold ones. Anything bold or solid are great foundational stamps to add a background pattern to, okay? It doesn't have to be a word. It could be a solid, circle or oval or square. It could be any kind of stamp, 
but if it's got a solid design, it will allow you to print a pattern over the top of it. It's kind of a double stamping thing. And this is something that I saw Stacy do uh, one year for Christmas and I was absolutely hooked on the idea. And ever since then, if there's a new stamp, I'm like, oh, I wonder how it would look with that technique. Uh, and it's been done many different ways. Some people call it uh, stamp kissing. Some people call it double stamping or layering. But the idea is taking a solid stamp and I'll demo this and you ink it with an oxide and then you stamp over this stamp with a background stamp. So in this case, it is a plaid, a perfect plaid. So it's this stamp and this stamp, and it stamps a plaid. And again, I'll demo this, but I just wanna show you some options for this technique because this technique is incredibly cool. So taking a stamp and maybe, maybe you have a wood grain. Now, not every background stamp is gonna be good for the technique. You want something that's gonna have distinct lines versus a, a full pattern. So for example, on this floral, it's, in my opinion, it's gonna look better with these distinct lines than all of this little detail because this busy work is gonna get complicated or fools the eye. So for a wood grain, I love the wood grain. I love stamping in wood grain. And again, it doesn't have to be text. It could be, maybe you have just a, a cool solid rectangle or a splat, but you want that splat to have a pattern. So now you've just stamped wood grain letters. Really, it's very cool to see. You can also take, like for Halloween, you know for Halloween, I went all crazy on Halloween with a couple of things. Um, I love this stamp. So this one, this is called Tapestry. So again, for this one, I think that the fine detail is better than this one. This one's got too much going on, in my opinion, for this technique, but this has got distinct lines. So take a look at Boo. Boo with a little tapestry, it's like a little wallpaper. It's like, and this will freak people's freak, man. You do this and you're like, what? How did you? I don't it mask a uh, stencil and you just go, yep. But when you see how it's really easy, or maybe you're going to see it for the 10th time and you'll smile the whole time now. Okay. Bubbles. You know, when bubbles came out last year, we've seen bubbles, everything from backgrounds to, to surf to all sorts of things. But as I mentioned, it is great uh, for Halloween because it creates almost like a spider web look. So this is just done with orange and black, and this is just done with green and black, but it also creates kind of a cool crackle. But play around with your stamps. Even if you don't have these, play around with mixing a solid with a background because yeah, it creates a cool effect. So of course, with this new one, I had to try it out. I had to see like, because I do Christmas, I have, and I have to say, I need to do more bold sayings because I have three Christmas sets, one Halloween and only one every day. And, when I was doing this, I'm like, I need some more of these. So take a look at how great this tiny floral print is to a word. So like best day ever. I love the softness. So this one I did like speckled egg, did a little uh, blue, and then I stamped in brown. I didn't want to do black, but I love that look. I did the same thing here. So this is a little saltwater taffy with some brown. Now, if you look at this little skippity bit, that's part of the design of this stamp. So you also need to be aware that these stamps were designed with some worn out areas. It's not for everybody. I happen to like that because it takes the pressure off of stamping perfect. So it's a, so when you see that, don't try to stamp it like seven times thinking I need to fill that in. I just like the imperfections. It, to me, it's more noticeable in like the O's and the D's. It's not in, it's not in all of them, um, but I just happen to like it. And take a look at this one. I do love this. I wasn't sure I would because it's a big, busy stamp. And when I did it, Mario walked in and he goes, that's really cool. I'm like, okay, I was going to throw it away, but uh, there you go. I, I love that. But see how nice those little flowers are? They just show up perfect in some of those words. And when they don't, they, you still get enough to make it cool. Yeah, it is. It's Everyone like, is in agreement with you. More bold say. Yeah, I didn't realize how few I had until, yeah, until I did it. So anyway, um, but that's just a nice thing. So just don't forget about background stamps and and playing around with it, even if they're not words. Again, it's about that. So here's how it works. It's actually, you know, pretty pretty simple. So let's do, let's do hello, my friend. We can do that. Okay. So the idea is, and we'll do the flower because I want to do that. We'll do this little tiny print. The idea is really simple. You're going to have a solid, and when I say solid, it means it's going to have a lot of rubber, and then you're going to have a detail pattern. I prefer to do this with a block. Uh, versus a stamping tool. I just like the flexibility of it, but if you are only comfortable doing a stamping tool, you do you. But I'm just gonna use blocks. 
The ingredients are also very simple. You need an oxide, so any color distress oxide, for your solid. That's going to be the foundational color. And I think for this one, I think I want to do a little salvage patina. I could. Yeah, I'll do salvage patina. That's fine. Um, then your ink, your texture, your pattern needs to be distress ink. So you want something that's going to show up. Will lost shadow show up on this? Mm, not really. Will tone on tone, like the ink version of that? Mm, not really. You need to go contrast, whether that's going to be brown or whether that's going to be black. Or if you wanted to do tone on tone, you could do like a light purple, say shaded lilac, and then you could use your distress ink, say villainous potion. So you could do dark over light if you want to stick with tone on tone. But it is important that your oxide color, your solid color, is lighter than your pattern color. For me, that's just my preference. Somebody else might have a, a totally different preference to it. Paper, I find that working on uh, white heavy stock or a smooth paper, it gives me a better image than watercolor paper, but mixed media also works well. But I haven't had really much luck on craft with this technique or watercolor. Again, this is just distressed white heavy stock, which is smooth. So here we go. All you're gonna do is you're gonna ink this up Tap, tap, tap. Now, if you swipe it, I'll show you that, you would create those striations. So those little swipes, you would see that in your stamping. So I would suggest that you just do your tapping and you really want to uh, tap, tap, tap that up. Now, I work on grid blocks. Grid blocks, it's a love or hate, guys, and I won't take offense to it. I love grid blocks. I hated them when I first did it, um, but I like knowing that I've made contact. I think a, a heavier block to me is just, it's too much in my hand, but some people think this is too little in their hand. They find these hard to hold. Uh, I just like how lightweight they are, and I know that I'm making really good contact with this, that I don't have to do uh, CPR pressure, but that's just me. So I have ink on here, that's oxide. Then I'm going to take my Distress ink or whatever uh, pattern color you want. I'm using walnut stain for this and I'm going to take my ink stamp and stamp it onto the ink stamp. So wherever you want it to be, you're just gonna press down, just make contact, lift it off, and then you'll take your stamp, place it down, just press with your fingertips. You don't, again, you don't need to go in CPR because I know I've made contact with it. That's the, that's the best part. And then you're just gonna lift it off. And this is what you have. There we go you have just a really fun, great stamp design. And you can, you can manipulate this in a bit. And I'll show you what I mean uh, for this technique because could you stamp this again? Yes, if you stamp it again, you're gonna get a second generation or a, a light fade of everything you just did. There would be enough ink on here, but it's gonna be really subtle, but it still works. There we go. So if you ever just want a light color, don't give up the second generation. So when I stamp words like this, I do just work on a piece of paper and I stamp several of them and then I'll cut it out for a card. I don't often stamp a sentiment direct on a card because I'm gonna screw it up and then it'll tick me off. So for the most part, I'll, so I'll always get a second generation because that's gonna work for one card and that's gonna work for something else. Why not? But if you don't wanna do that, I'm just gonna clean this off with water. Just spray it with a little bit of water. My ink here, I don't know if you can see it, but it does have a little oxide transfer. I just prefer to wipe it off and start over. Some people will go right into that, so whatever's gonna work for you. But here's another thing that you can do with this technique. You can also control the intensity of that color, both by ink, but also by how you apply it. So it kind of goes back to what I was saying uh, with the oxide. So I'm gonna do my tap, tap, tap. Just because I wanna have a nice, nice, coverage of ink on there just to I don't want to over ink it but I want to make sure that I have enough ink to to stamp into so far so good okay now on this one instead of tapping like I did this one I am going to just lightly swipe and I'll go in different directions because I want to make sure that I get ink on here uh, you might get some of the threads from the ink pad that's just it so make sure they're out of your way but now I'll just stamp into this I'll go this direction I like this spot again I'm going to stamp I'm going to lift Go on my paper and stamp. What this is gonna do is it's still gonna give me the intensity of the color, but it's gonna make the brown a little bit lighter. 
and it's just going to have a different fade. It's not going to be as intense as this one. It's just going to be more subtle. Not a significant amount, but enough that it's just going to, because sometimes, see up here, you get, it's really kind of thick. It just creates a lighter, more detailed look. So you kind of have to play around. It also depends on how juicy your ink pad is too, right? I just re-inked mine before this demo because of the next technique I'm going to do. So if you have a dry ink pad, um, that's actually going to be pretty good for this technique because you'll get a little bit more detail, but pretty fun. This one, I'm just going to breathe on that. So I've been talking a bit. Yeah, I like that one too. Nice, easy, great technique. But again, I just wanted to touch on that because sometimes, you know, when you see that take technique or maybe you only saw it during the Christmas demo, you just think of it as plaid. Like, oh, I'm gonna do that plaid stamping and you don't realize how cool it is with flowers and wood grain and all the other uh, great things that you can do. And for that, the stamp, I just normally just stick it onto the glass mat or sometimes I'll even uh, leave it on the set. Okay. So far, so good. Let's pack that up, get those out of the way. Okay, another thing that I just wanted to talk about, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna demo this one next, is, let me put this back. I'm a, I'm a tidy maker. You are. Just, I am, I just, that's what I like to do. Um, some things that, that I really like is, is just trying things out, trying things out different. And this was one of the things that I just had an idea and I'm like, I wonder if it would work. Wouldn't it be cool? You know, all those things that run through my random head. But I found that when I was working on cards, one of the things that I find really convenient are stickers. And you saw those in a lot of makes. So I'm gonna grab these out. Um, Ideology, we do a lot of different stickers. Um, everything from small talk stickers, which are just uh, that little type. Great thing about small talk, they come in uh, black and white, white and black, same verses in there. Then we have the metallic. So these are same thing, uh, black with gold metallic and white with gold metallic. These are kind of a, a foiled sticker. So you saw those on the makes. You also get some labels like that, but these are, so these are already foiled, but they make really, I mean, they're, they're quick for cards. Sure, you can do this with stamps and foil, but it's really nice to have the convenience of stickers. Then we also have, of course, clippings, which are just, you know, the little words. We also have uh, chit chat, big chat went away, but these are individual words if you want to create quotes. Uh, my favorite, snarky. I would like to just, I would like to do an entire video where I just kind of read uh, snarky, but they're just really, they're just fun. And I see a lot of people pairing these with photos. So stickers are a great option, believe it or not, because you can still take a sticker, stick it onto cardstock, and then just still use your foam tape. So it doesn't have to go flat, but it can, okay? But the other option is uh, finding little verses because sometimes a sticker is not going to be the aesthetic that I want. And so I want something that's just going to have a bit more, uh, I don't know, of like a handmade vibe. So the other stamps are these tiny texts. Now these are great for backgrounds, but they all come cut. So each one is cut in between. Now they're not cut perfect because uh, in this case, I wanted you to be able to leave it on as a sheet and stamp a bunch of words in the background but there is tiny text, there's an everyday one, a Halloween one, and a Christmas one. But these contain just some different fonts. So just the block font and the type font, but a lot of great sentiments that aren't your everyday, you know, happy birthday kind of thing. So if you are looking for something tiny that can make strips, this is another great set and you have them for, for all seasons. So that's what I did for the text here. But what I did for the coloring was just a really, it's one of those duh things that you might roll your eyes when you see it. But to me, I've told you time and time again, I'm not comfortable with coloring. I just don't find that much enjoyment in it. Um, I wish I did, but it kind of freaks me out. I mean, you, you, you're good though, but you try a lot. So. I, I do try, I like it, but I, I'm not good at it. So here is a very simple way to color or watercolor these floral trims just using an ink pad, one ink pad. That's it. Well, as your color. The idea behind it, let me, let me grab the stamp set. Uh, what, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Because I'll demo this entirely, is taking a stamp and what we're going to use as our foundation piece, our piece that goes right down the middle, these strips right here, is Ideology Craft Stock. Now, I've talked about Craft Stock. We've had Ideology. Uh, craft stock in the line for years, but just, I think it was last year, maybe the year before, we changed it to a hundred pound craft. So this is brown craft paper. 
flooded in color. Craft stock used to come textured. Uh, it used to come with that linen print, but I found that if you do that, you can't stamp on it. And that's really what I wanted to do. What's really cool about this paper, you can see that it has a natural bow to it. So uh, when you get it out of the package, it's gonna do that. That's just the nature of this because of the flood of color. This is really meant to work on and then glue down to something. It's really not an ideal card base unless you like your cards to have a pocket aesthetic to it. Um, but this is designed to, to die cut or stamp and stick down. But it comes in a variety of colors and they mimic the distress line, but they all have a craft base. And here's the great thing about this paper that maybe people don't realize where you think, well, it's just like colored cardstock. No, colored cardstock is colored through and through. It's the, it's the pulp of the paper that's the color. This is actually craft paper printed in a color. And that printing allows me to play or manipulate it uh, and create a cool effect. So let's take, see that one was a green one. Maybe I wanna do, I can do a blue one. I can do a lot of different colors. I think, I think blue is pretty, wow. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't necessarily, or maybe I'll try a bright green. Um, it doesn't work with all the colors as well. I'll show you what I mean. So the idea is stamping an image, because I wanna show you uh, what we're doing before I demo it. You stamp your image in a waterproof ink. So we start by stamping the floral in black archival. And I will, I'll demo this whole thing start to finish. So our outline is waterproof, any waterproof ink. I'm using archival, but it could be any waterproof ink that you stamp with. Could you emboss it? Sure, you do whatever. I just like the, the idea that it's not embossed because to me, it just looks more bleached, I guess, by not uh, embossing. Once you stamp and this dries, um, it has, you have a lot of options. One, you could go in in color. Okay, that would be the normal way to use it. I would stamp on this paper and you've seen me do that, uh, stamp in archival and go in with pencils and color. So I was thinking, what if I did it backwards? What if I started with color, then stamped and then took it away? Then I'm not really worrying about coloring. So that's really what we did here. These samples show that it can be done in brown, which is my happy place, but I know better than to do a demo and only live in the world of brown. It could also be done with a coordinating color, meaning the paper color is this light pink, but we inked in dark pink. Light orange, we inked in a darker orange. Yellow, and you can see that depending on your color, like blue is really beautiful. Just picking a different color, I love this, like salvage patina, this is like a mermaid lagoon. By picking a, a contrasting color of ink, that's gonna determine how much your flower contrasts with its background. I love the subtlety of this, because your eye sees it as two different blues, but it doesn't look like it's done in a white pen or a watercolor, okay? So here's how it works. And why does my brain work like this? I don't know why. Because it does. It just does. So I start with paper, and then I'm gonna take my background ink color. And in this case, I'm gonna demo brown. It only works with distress ink. Not necessarily walnut stain, but distress ink. Oxide, it won't do this. It won't do what you want it to do. I did try it and it did not work. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take ink and a blending tool and create a foundation of a brown ink, okay? So I just start direct to paper. There's no reason to, to be ceremonial about this because already you can see how it blends. And you're like, what? You just put all that. This is printed in color. So it's not like regular cardstock that if you just did that, you're gonna see it and it's never gonna blend. This allows me, because of that color coding, I can blend my ink on there. And I'm gonna blend it till, you know, you could go back and add another layer if you want. Could you just do a blending tool if literally going direct to paper freaks your freak? Yes, you can. But there's a foundation of brown on there. You can see, enough brown for me. Then what we're going to do is we need to make sure this is dry because if you touch it right now, and I'll just touch it with my thumb, it's gonna start lifting the ink because the ink is sitting on this ink surface. So we wanna avoid the touch right now until we have a chance uh, to dry this ink a little bit. So I'm just gonna take a heat tool and I'm just gonna dry. Now, how long does that have to dry? Just long enough, a few seconds really. It doesn't have to be super long, but I just wanna give the resins of this ink a chance to just kind of set in the paper. That's gonna be fine. Then we're going to take our stamp. So I'm gonna start stamping. Actually, let me find um, my stamp platform, which I had, here it is. I'm like, I put it in a convenient spot. That's my problem. It needed to just be in the pile. 
So now I'm going to take uh, a stamping tool because I prefer on this particular one, I prefer to give it a couple of a couple of hits of black. That's just me. I like to do a double stamp. So, but if you want to just do it one time, you can. Okay, we're going to take our paper. I got magnets everywhere. Um, I think I'm going to create. I think I'm going to create a partial. So I'll be okay. So I think what I'll do on this one because I'm going to go partial is I'll start with one magnet. And then I'm going to take this stamp and position like where I want this to be. Oh, not bad. I positioned that magnet pretty darn close. Okay. I think right there, that's good enough. Now you could tape this down. I have a, a piece of media grip uh, on here. So my paper is, is going to stay. It's going to behave pretty well, I hope. And maybe I'll go over here. A lot of times I'll start with a piece of paper larger than what I want because I can go back and trim it. In fact, I think I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. There we go. So I want my stamp just to kind of fade off to that edge. Does that make sense? So next, I'm going to pick that up and I'll ink up my stamp archival. So I still want to stamp in something waterproof. There we go. Tap, tap, tap. So if you wanted to create a tone on tone, you could just stamp with archival. So if you didn't want your image to be black, you could stamp with a darker color of archival, but you're going to want it to be waterproof because if you try to stamp distress on top of distress, uh, your image will start to bleed because those inks will want to get together and party. Uh, so distress archival, it's the color of distress, but it's an archival formulation. So you could say, take peeled paint distress archival and stamp your flower if you didn't want it to be black. So again, if you have the platform, I'm pushing down into the hinge to make sure it's seated uh, consistently. And then I'm just going to stamp with purpose. Again, I just like to use my fingerprint, my fingers. Some people, you know, want to push down or use some type of tool. You do whatever works for you. I'm going to open it up so far. So good. I like that image, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to stamp it again. Again, just tap, tap, tap. This time I'm not going to go as crazy with the archival, but same thing. I'm going to push into that hinge place. I hope this didn't move. We'll see in a second. I was like, that looks a little further away. Maybe not. Ah, there we go. Okay. We got a second impression. So now I'm going to slide these off. There's our image on inked craft. Take this off a little bit of water. You could use any kind of cleaner you want. I just use water unless I need my stamp totally clean for lift ink. Same thing here. Water will take it off of the grip. There we go. And that just provides like some cling. So I, I can get away with those kind of crazy magnets, right? Okay. So done with that for right now, set that off to the side. I'll put that down here. That's good. Okay. So now we have archival. So same thing, this archival ink, although it dries uh, fairly quick, it wants to sit on this paper as well. So I just want to go in and dry this as well. Now, if you have a different type of ink, maybe a stays on, you might need to skip this step because it's already dry. It's not going to hurt if you dry it, but you want to make sure that if you're going to do this technique that I'm sharing, don't do assembly line. Like don't put these through some heat tunnel or whatever. Like you need to do each one at a time because essentially what's happening is we have the ink on the paper and the ink is still sitting on that. And while it's it's not really wanting to absorb right now. Over time, that brown and black and everything will absorb into this cardstock. So we want to just kind of work fairly quickly, okay? Meaning just do one at a time. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Look at that. I can. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to take a paper towel, a water brush or paintbrush, totally up to you. Uh, I just like to use a water brush because it's going to keep a continuous flow of color. And I love the detailer. This is my distress water brush because it's super tiny. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and remove color from the flower. Hey Mario, can you grab me a post-it note real quick? Sure. That's my little tip I learned from Christina Werner, which was super smart because I have really pudgy fingers that like to, I don't, I don't think my fingers are sweaty, but obviously the moisture, if you take a post-it note and you, I just stick my fingers to it, then I can use the post-it note to hold my paper and then it never leaves fingerprints. Okay. So what I did for this, because it was a little trouble seeing it was making a template, meaning I just stamped it on a piece of white paper and I colored in black, the areas that I want to leave alone. So sometimes in the middle of this, I'm like, what, what part is that? It doesn't really matter, but because we wanted to create several of them, having a template 
was way easier because uh, you need to know. And truth be told, Mario did all of these because he was like, how do I know where to lift? I'm like, here's your template. But it was good. I think it's a great idea because now you can just look and see like, okay, that this the white area is what we want to lift. And that's just what we're doing. So what you're going to do with a wet brush is we're just going to take this. We're going to go right over that area, one piece at a time, take a paper towel and dab it down. And you can see already it just lifts. It's like magic. Okay. It took that brown ink off. Now I have brown ink on my water brush. So I prefer to clean my brush on a, on a palette versus the paper towel, because if you always wipe it off on a paper towel, you're essentially taking the water out. So that's really all I'm doing. I'm just, <laughs> you're just going in and removing color. And I like the fact that depending on how much water you, you add or lift, that's just going to determine the intensity of you can always go back and lift it a second time. That's fine, but it's just water. And to me, it creates such a beautiful, uh, just almost an organic bleached color. Could you splatter the background? Yes. Could you stamp on the background? Yes. You could do all of those other things. The technique is merely adding a color of ink first and then removing it. Um, and so like here, I'll just hold this up. Like I can leave that little bit of brown there. If I dab it, it'll take it off. I can always go back and take it off again, but I like the fact that I'm just gonna leave it. Really simple. So again, little water brush, but this is why I prefer, uh, besides that this is such a tiny tip, the flow control of this is magic. I know that, you know, so I know right here, see that little, that little parking space is black. So I know to leave that there. So I'm gonna just jump right over to that other part. Um, yeah, sometimes people buy water brushes and I get it, you know, they're like, oh, but you can get three for a dollar. Sometimes you can get a good one, but most of the time they just pour water out and you want something that's going to, and then occasionally I'll just wipe this up. Yeah, because it is really, it's really hard with a brush, just a regular brush. Yeah, I tried it. I couldn't control it. It was just so much water that it went outside the lines. Um, and I like that this always remains a point. You can, there you go. If it can focus, there we go. See? No matter what, I mean, this brush is old, but it maintains a point. So you get the idea here. I don't have to do the whole thing, but that's essentially um, what you do. You just pick that off and don't forget to wipe off the brush. Cause if you don't take the ink off, when you go back, you're essentially painting the next part with brown ink. Does that make sense? So that's why you just want a clean brush. Cause we're really lifting it with water. But what you get really is a beautiful faux bleach. It's very subtle. And some people would be like, well, this is just dumb. I'll go in with my pencil. And yes, you could achieve a technique many ways. You could take cardstock and you could color and watercolor a darker color on top. I get that. This was just the idea that if you like the vintage vibe and as it dries, to me, it does create more of a faux bleach look and it doesn't necessarily have a painted look because it's just going down to the base color. I also like the fact that you could create kind of this, uh, different blended background depending on what inks you use but yellow like i don't know it just it didn't seem to want to lift as much um i but there again is it because i inked it darker than i should have is it because i used ground espresso instead of walnut stain there could be a lot of variables here um i don't i don't necessarily know but i'm not i'm not bothered with it it's just not as clean as the other ones and for whatever reason yellow uh, and purple, but both of those had ground espresso. So, but Villainous Potion, I already knew, uh, was probably not going to play nice, and it didn't. Villainous Potion has so much dye, but pretty cool. It's just a fun way to super to super. create that look. Because when I said tomorrow, I'm like, I, I just need help. Like, I'll I'll show you this. I'll do one, but I want to do it in many colors just to show uh, how cool it looks. And, I need a cheat sheet. and he goes, I I can't color. I'm like, but you're <laughs> uncoloring. Think about that. You're not coloring. You're just taking it away. But yeah, the cheat sheets. Uh, were helpful, but really cool. And then that's, that's why I wanted just to show you like, well, how would you use that on a card? Could you use the, a bigger thing? Yes. But having strips of paper, I don't know. It felt a little bit more forgiving. And I really love the idea of pairing it with other things, embossing folders, other organic things. And uh, it gave a vintage appeal uh, to this floral stamp, but that's what it is. It's again, we start with ideology craft stock. Now we know why uh, one of the benefits uh, of it being smooth, any color, we take distress ink, whatever color we want, ink the paper, but blend it in. Like don't have a, a ton of ink because it's just that much more you have to take off. The paper will only take so much color. Dry that for a few seconds. 
stamp with something waterproof, dry that for a few seconds, and then just go in and, and lift. You can always go back and lift more. That's, that's a thing that's super important to, to remember. You can always lift more. So don't, don't sit there, in my opinion, I'm not telling you how to, how to make, but in my opinion, don't bother going over the same pedal three or four times because as it dries, it does change a little bit and you might actually like having it a bit more uh, modeled than clean. May not, so like here, if I wanted to go over this, because this one I did earlier, maybe I just go in the middle section just to see if I can take anything off. I took off a little bit, not much. So it creates a little bit lighter, not much that I've really noticed, but there you go. Really, really simple, but you definitely want to work with a paper towel for this, something that's going to be super absorbent to take the color. And again, don't forget to clean your brush. Okay, that's a simple one, but cool. Uncolor. You can uncolor, yeah, but fun. So I hope you like that idea for, uh, and it doesn't have to be the stamp, anything that's going to have an open space, just think of like, Back in the day, we used to actually paint with bleach. Those stampers that have been stamping for years, you know what I mean. We used to literally take Clorox and paint it on and the fumes and it would bleach the paper and then your card would smell just as lovely, but it was cool. Okay. Then let's see, I should have, okay, let's just, let's do one more. We can do one more. I got time to do one more. I'm just gonna do one quick background just to show you. I can, well, we'll see. We're, we're hitting the three hour mark. So, okay, I'm gonna do alcohol ink real quick. So I'm gonna remove the mat for this because I think that that's, that's something I wanna take away. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out now. Oh, wrong way. Okay, yeah, did I do all right? Am I a little wonky? Oh, there we go. Ah, thank you. Okay, um, let's, yeah, let's go in, take that, to take that. Okay. So for this one, I'll show you a couple of different ways. We'll actually do, we'll do two. I'll do one, I'll show you distress and I'll show you alcoholing because both of them are super quick and you don't have to overthink it. It doesn't necessarily have to pertain to the stamp, although it could, but it's just about creating some backgrounds. So first thing, if you want to create um, a quick background, you can just use your inks. And I'll just, again, no judgment on the color. So I'm gonna use the palette part of the mat. I'm just gonna take an ink cube and just squish it down. If you wanna get color, you gotta squish your ink pad. You can't just tap your ink pad because again, ink is a suspended medium. So it is important that you squish it. Okay, so like if I just do that, that's not gonna give me enough ink, but if I push down, give it a little twist, look at that. So I do like the fact that this white area will still reveal the color that I'm putting down on here. Uh, oh yeah, I used, to, I used to use so many different art mediums. I used to mix things in my embossing powder. I mixed cocoa uh, in embossing powder in brown and then it would smell like chocolate. I used to mix uh, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid without the sugar. I don't know if they still do that, but like you used to get the little packs of Kool-Aid like orange and grape and just a little bit of that powder, not a lot, but I used to mix a little bit of that in my embossing powder and shake it up. And then when you emboss, then like your orange embossing powder would smell like orange and gosh, we should do so much stuff. You if you ever stamp with condensed milk, that is amazing. It's messy, but man, it's so good. But yeah, you just take condensed milk and put it on a makeup sponge, dab it onto a stamp, stamp with uh, condensed <laughs> milk. And then when you heat emboss it, it caramelizes. So it turns it brown, but it smells so good, but it also oh looks gosh. cool. Yeah, we, you know, this was, was this was, days. yeah, that. this was days when you didn't have product. You really didn't. You just, you had what you had and you were reading in magazines and, you know, somebody shared this tip and you like couldn't wait to try it. And yeah, that's what it was. Remember magazines? That's a, that was our only source of inspiration. You waited every month for, you know, your Somerset or Art Expressions. Gosh, I remember them. Okay, I'm good. I don't even need all these colors. I'm just talking. Okay, so those were Distress Ink. Uh, we're just going to take a piece of watercolor cardstock. Now you can use either side. If you're going to stamp on it, my advice is going to be the smooth side, but you can also, if you have a stamping tool, you can get away with the textured side. Totally up to you. Okay. So next I need, can you what? grab my little jar? I think I just, I set it right over there by my ink spinner. It's just an empty jar. Thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh -huh. I just threw it there. there you go. Okay. I'm just going to take a little bit of water 
just want to start with this. Now you can do this a, a couple of different ways. I'm just going to use a jar of water for this just because it's quicker. Uh, get yourself a brush and you're going to flood the brush with water. And I'll just start by, uh, are those grid lines under the white film on the glass? These? Yes. So this is, all of this printing is under the glass, so it can't clean up. So these grid lines come on there when you remove the mat. You have this white space. Um, I'll zoom out. Someone just asked about the medium mat. There you go. That's really the full palette. <laughs> I'm only using this part. But yes, this is, that's what acts as your light source. I, everyone has their, their own preference. I get that. I prefer to work on a black surface because it, my eye rests better on my make on black, but I prefer to color uh, or use color on a white surface. But I know some people are, they just like a, a white background. So I'm going to start with just a wet brush. So I'm really flooding my brush with water. And then just going down the middle of my cardstock, I'm just making a crazy haphazard blob. So I'm kind of going out of the, and each time I'm loading up my brush again, I'm just kind of just moving it all the way across. And you can, you know, you can take it different areas. I often try to look and see, you know, if I was random enough. I'm, I'm no Dina Wakely. Dina Wakely totally embraces her randomness and I wish I could. I know she says like, use your, non-dominant hand, but my dominant brain won't let, won't allow that. Okay. So I have a wet brush, but now I just took off most of the water, wet paper. I'm just going to pick up some of that color. Oh, and I'm just going to start, let's approve. And I'm just going to start picking up some color. I agree. I approve that too. And then I'm just going to dab it in with, in with the inks. Now, if I'm going to go into another color, you had no idea it was under your mat. Yeah, it there. That's the best part. So I'm just picking another color, just kind of going into orange. And you can do this with watercolors. You can do this with uh, other inks, your spray inks. This is just really about picking up some, some color and just letting it kind of float into that water that you created. And you kind of, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Um, I'm going to put down a little bit more pink because I don't think I have enough pink in there. All right, I'm going to clean that up. Cobra was ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I know, I heard that. Sorry. That's how we know. That's all right. Yep. Pick that up. A little bit more, a little prize ribbon there. And if you see that your color is not moving enough, just get your brush a little wetter and just go in and add some color. Okay. Again, I'm just dabbing this. And you just, you'll start kind of letting it do its thing, if you will. Um, especially. As long as your brush the second time isn't soaking wet, you'll be okay. Um, I like the fact that like when I, when I start to just let these things go, you can see how they'll flow into those extra areas. So then like down here where I don't have a lot of color, that's where I'll just go back and add some. As long as your paper stays wet, it's pretty easy to go back and introduce more. So I can just take that, go right into the water. Water won't hurt distress ink. So even though there's water there, this is a, a water-based ink. So don't think that you have to dry it off. Don't. Okay. Just going to pick that up and then I'll just add some more of that color right there. And that'll just kind of blend right in there. Pretty easy. And you can just pick this up. I mean, if, if you have a watercolor set or really if you had more ink down, I'm, I just wanted to demo this idea quick. You can start kind of tapping and filling in the blanks. But the point of this technique is you just, you kind of let it do its thing. And depending on how much color you added. So here you can see I was really, generous with my water stripe. I just kind of went really wide because I knew I wanted to do the stamp, but that's all that that happened. That was just serendipitous that it fell right in that dark area, but you just kind of let it do its thing. I prefer to let it dry. And I also prefer that like when you're, when you're going in with your color that, you know, you just, you just kind of dab it on. You just want to make sure that what you're putting down is fairly wet. And you can move your paper if you want to create drips. Just don't get too crazy going side to side because you could end up muddying the color. But a simple way that you can uh, create a watercolor background. I've seen this done in much larger uh, areas and I like that where the, you essentially missed your entire sheet of paper and then go for it. But by adding that water background, then the inks will travel to the edge of that water and they won't go past that edge. Even when they're blooming and wicking, they won't ever go past that edge that you establish with water. So even down here, I would add more color.
but you get the gist of it. That's the whole point of the demo. You get the gist of it. Okay, so that's one way uh, to create color. Another easy way is alcohol ink. And I wanted to just show how to use alcohol inks because I am no alcohol ink artist, although <laughs> designed it. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm the best with it. There's so many different ways that you can use alcohol inks. And for me, I love the fact that they're very forgiving. And I think sometimes people are intimidated by alcohol ink and I can understand why, you know, when I see the talent out there of what alcohol ink artists do, I'm intimidated. I look at that and I'm like that, I can't do that, but I can do what I do and I'm happy with that. And what I love about alcohol inks is you can really create beautiful, colorful backgrounds and then you can stamp on it. Whether it's this or whether you did creative blocks and you die cut this, cause you can die cut Yupo. That this is done on Yupo, you can die cut it. But creating a, a blend is, is easier than you think. So I'll attempt to do it live. I might regret it later, but hey, that's gonna be the best part. So I'm going to start with a piece of Yupo and I want it to be white. It could be regular Yupo or it could be Yupo heavy stock, but I definitely want something synthetic because that's going to give me the most play time. If you try to do this with glossy cardstock or photo paper, it is not gonna give you the play time that we, that we need or want for alcohol ink. Yupo comes in bigger sheets. It comes in eight by 10 sheets as well. That's what this one was done. It was just sliced down. Uh, you can also cut this to whatever size. I'm just gonna start with a piece of it. That's fine. Then what I'm going to do off camera is I'm just gonna mist one side of the Yupo with water, just one little mist. So it's not soaking. It has just a couple of little splashes on it and lay it on the mat. By adding some water, it's gonna keep my paper from moving. Okay, so it's just surface tension. I don't want my craft mat here because alcohol ink will stain that fabric. It doesn't ruin it, but it will make it look like a, a bag of Skittles blew up on your, on your mat. And if you're good with that, then don't remove it. But that's why I always remove it. Then I'm gonna take a, a whole rainbow of alcohol ink. So I kind of have them in rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, uh, they're rolling everywhere. Some greens. I'm going to open these up in a second. Greens, blues, purple. So those are my rainbow colors. And all I'm going to do is open them up um, and put the cap like right behind it on the other side. It's just, I'm trying to zoom in, but you can see that I'm not really great with the camera. All right. When I go to open the inks, I never want to open the inks over my paper. The alcohol inks, because they have a resin, uh, they kind of dry with a little crust around the nib. I'll just try to show you. There's like a little dried ink, a little crusty. Uh, and if that crusty falls on your paper, that's a color. So I don't really want that to be there. So that's why I just kind of open them off camera. That's all I'm, I'm doing. Alcohol ink bottles, these alcohol ink bottles are designed to be left open. I just opened this green. Can you see that little dot of green creeping up the nib? That's by design. These bottles are designed to be left open while you're working with them. So even though this is a fast drying solvent ink, alcohol inks are for uh, glossy surfaces, metal, glass, plastic, uh, all sorts of things. That's the, thanks Mario, non-porous surfaces, th that's their specialty. So uh, sometimes the fast drying thing, people get confused and they think, oh, I gotta put the cap on really quick. Not really, that little bead of ink will stay there uh, the whole time, okay? So you can leave them open and then cap them when you're done. Then I'm gonna work with some isopropyl alcohol. This is 91% alcohol or higher. You could use blending solution for this, but you'll see that I'm gonna flood this with a lot and blending solution contains resin and it's great for a lot of blends, but for this, I find that it makes it too sticky. So I prefer isopropyl alcohol for this technique. So I'm just going to start by creating however many colors I have, I'm gonna create that many drops of isopropyl uh, base for the color. So I'll start with a little drip of isopropyl and then we'll do a drop of pink and then I'll do more isopropyl and a drop of red. And I don't care if they touch um, I don't care if it's more than a drop, you know, I just want the ink to sit in the isopropyl and not just directly on the paper to start. And just drip ink. We can always add more. It just really depends. So I'm just kind of speeding up the process here. It's kind of hard to, my, my phone is in my eye line, but I got it. Little drip, little drip, little drip little drip, so it looks like I'm not even gonna to get to the end of this paper, but who cares? And if you get little splashes, don't matter. You're gonna see this is gonna go through a lot of ugly before it's good. Okay, there's my isopropyl. Next, I'm gonna take a blower and I'm just gonna start moving this ink around. And I'm gonna to try to kind of keep it somewhat contained in its lines, meaning I'm not 
not doing that to where you hear it. I'm not taking blood pressure. I'm just using the blower and changing the angle to actually blow. So it's almost like little soft, little puffs. And you'll see that if you move that at the same time, you can, you'll have a little bit more control of direction, let's just say. Okay. And don't freak your freak at this point. Really don't, don't panic as where the color's going or how much color, or I don't have enough pink. Like it doesn't really matter. Now that's just an easy blend. So to me, that's just easy. And some people, you can do that and you're totally fine with that. That's okay. The other thing to note though, is the isopropyl, it works a little different depending on your climate as well. If you uh, live in a high humid area, we live in Arizona, so it, there's not a lot of humidity, but if you have a lot of humidity, sometimes your inks will sweat around the edge. That's perfectly normal for that type of area. Uh, it'll create a, a different texture or pattern, but it's going to be okay. Um, so don't worry about how it, how it sits or goes on the edge, but this is essentially where I start. And this is not where I ultimately want to end up. I don't really like it. So what I do is just decide what I want to change or what I want more. So first off, I know I want some more pink. So I'm going to put some pink down there, just pink in that area because alcohol ink replaces itself. So you can see that that pink just kind of pushed that red out of the way. I just wanted to introduce that first. Okay. Now I'm just doing little tiny puffs just to kind of uh, break down. I'll just say the, the flow of it, meaning it's not totally dry, but it's also not, I don't see the inks moving anymore. Do you see the inks moving? No. And I would pick this up, but then, you know, water tension. And that's why I do the water as well. Cause if you don't and you use the blower, <laughs> your paper kind of blows around. So now it's just about having fun with isopropyl. This is about literally just putting drops of isopropyl all the way down what you just did. And now you're going to go in and just do the same thing. This one is a little bit more pressure, not too much, not creating spin art, but now we can take that color and just get a little bit more movement, a little bit more play. Anytime I want to see more color, I can add more color. I can add a couple of drops of isopropyl and bring in that color. So in that case, you saw, I wanted a little bit more turquoise and there it is. I like how my purples, even though I used one, you see how the isopropyl kind of gave it a, a different shade because that mixed with the blue that I had next to it. This one's a little bit cleaner. Any little bit of movement, just isopropyl at a time and just using that blower to move is what's going to create that playfulness. And you can do this as many times as you want. I love adding like wherever I want that color to go is where I'll put the isopropyl. That's just going to give it a little bit more movement. And that's what's really, really cool. I think that that creates the effect. And yeah, I just saw Taylor said water is a cool trick. It is. It's the most important thing because otherwise you're chasing your paper the whole time because you're using that blower and then it's blowing the paper around. So even if I'm just stamping with the alcohol ink tool, I'll often go in. Now down here, I think they have like quite a bit of color. I'm just going to try to move this, not necessarily off, but I will move a little bit off the edge, but just kind of create just more of a, of a bloom, if you will. Put some more pink in there. You can add more. So you can see that by doing this, the whole point of this demo is to remind you that alcohol ink is not a one time wonder. It's about as long as you just keep things moving and going, you can always go back and change it out. You really can. And you can change it to the point of you liking it. So at this point, I'm adding color back in because I want to add some color, but I'm going to go back and blend it again. So I'll add some purple here but it's not creating these giant like explosions. Okay. It, it isn't. So then I can go back and I'll add kind of drips all the way down the center. And you see that that's just going to allow a little bit more movement of that ink or that color. And you can create smaller drips. So I just, to me, I find it incredibly, this is the kind of coloring that I can kind of zone out on because I like the fact that it, each time I do it, it's going to like, you're only as good as your next layer on this one. So if you hate it, you just need to keep working with it. If you want to, you know, change some of the lines, isopropyl is just going to, it's going to break down those lines. So we're actually kind of filling that paper pretty well. And you just get that softness. If I want to get a little softness along that edge, I'll just put ISO right along there. And you'll see that it's this, the blow, the blower is really easy to use. If you just remember like just those kind of slow, steady little puffs I actually like that uh, soft edge. So I'm just going to go along that whole thing and 
soften that edge as well because as it dries it will create just more of a see a little wispiness right there i like that totally different than the other one but see how it's just it makes for a super uh, cool organic background especially for something that you want to stamp over the top of or die cut or any of that now once you're happy with it i tend to just go in with the the blower and just make sure that I don't have any puddles, but I'm gonna kind of let this thing do its thing, if you will. Um, let it air dry is gonna give you the best, the best option, but I wanna hold it up to the camera, so I'm just gonna lift it up. Just so you can see the great depth that these things do. So you can see down here, it's still a little wet, and I'm gonna let it do its thing. But see how I'm getting these ripples on the edge? I'm getting these cool little stone-like looks. So by putting that isopropyl, and you could keep going. If there's anything about a background that you don't like, just add some more alcohol and just go in and move it around. To me, the blower gives me a little bit more fluid movement than stamping it, but it's a beautiful background and each one will be different. This is just one that I just kept working even more. So this was, this was probably doing this maybe two or three more times uh, filling it and I loved it. So it, there's no way that, I mean, it's, it is the one medium that you can't screw up. And I know that that that's a hard thing to wrap your head around because you just think, oh no, you know, I'm going to just get there. I'm going to hate it. Even if you hate something. So like, I'm going to go back into this just to prove my point. Um, even if you hate something about it, you can still go back and change it again. So like right there, I didn't like how concentrated that pink and red. So I just opened it up and to me, it just made it lighter. If you want something off the edge, you can use the blower to like edit, you know, you can push some of that color off, but it's only going to be beneficial on the edges. Uh, if you get there. So like on this purple, although I do like the intensity of it, um, I'm still just going to take that and just help feather that off. So even those little drops, so you can just get right in there with that blower tool and just break up the party. Pretty fascinating, actually. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But I just wanted to share that simple demo because it makes for a great background, especially for this, because you, this could be embossed in white. Uh, you could do lift ink. There's a million things you can do. But I think sometimes people are very intimidated with alcohol ink because you think like, you know, maybe you're just not even good at, at watercolor and you're like, oh, blending. Well, watercolor, you kind of get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That's how this is drying, which I love. I told you it's going to create a beautiful wispiness. That's watercolor. It does it. Alcohol ink, because it can replace itself and you could add to it, it's totally different. But having isopropyl is what's allowing me to keep adding. If you did all that with blending solution, this thing would be like a fruit roll up. It would be so sticky because blending solution is for blending. It has a resin, but it's not for, it's not for flowing the color. That's where ISO comes in. The downside to isopropyl is that it, it does dilute the color. So you can see that's why we're kind of getting that fade, but I'm, I'm here for that. I, I like the idea. So that's it. I mean, that's, that's kind of the cool thing to, to just work with with your products different. I absolutely love it. It's really fun. Um, one last thing I'm just going to share and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, it's not really a demo. It's just an idea just to show you uh, a cool way to use a stencil. So I'm going to set this down. I'm just going to put, you can clean your craft sheet. I, I don't have my hand sanitizer. Normally I would clean with hand sanitizer. Uh, it's the easiest way to clean alcohol ink because it stays wet longer, but isopropyl also takes it off. It's just one. Remember when I blew all that pink off the edge? clean that off. And then I just use glass cleaner. So, um, so these will cap up later. doesn't matter, but I just wanted to show you something really cool with, uh, a stencil. Let me take this. I think I'm going to actually trim this up, Mario. I'm going to just I got my trimmer off camera. So I did this one. Oh, I don't know. Literally how many minutes, three minutes, three minutes before live, because that's how I like to work. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as he said you have like six minutes, I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Okay. And it was really about showing um, how to use these stencils. So I, I absolutely love this brush mark stencil. But when I showed you the swatches of the stencil, and I don't even know where those are now, they're here. This was just done with distress ink through the stencil. So all I did was put a post it note down, took my, uh, blending brush and just went in with pinks and I didn't clean the brush in between. So when I'm inking this, I just work with a set of brushes. I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, that goes there, and brown, you get the idea. So I wipe off the brush and I go from light to dark on, on all the colors. 
was so, going to ask about your circles. So. Oh, I just use sharpies to mark my to mark the rings of that. If you wonder how how I know what that is, when I open these, I just take a sharpie and draw around that. Uh, then I know the color, and it will wear off eventually. That's why we kind of keep them handy. But it's a good reference, so you know what what brushes what long. brushes what. It does. It lasts yeah. lasts really good. So I just go in and again I would mask that off of my stencil, post-it note, take the brush, start in pink, dip in pick raspberry, go here, dip in barn door, go here, dip in lumberjack plaid. Okay. Then I just move this down, dip in, you know, orange, whatever, spice marmalade, rusty hinge. So you get the idea. You can make whatever palette you want. This was easier because I just kind of kept it to row. Once it's done, wipe off your stencil. But if you want it to go from an inky brush stroke to what actually looks like paint, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is translucent texture paste, okay? So this stuff is kind of like mayo. It's like mayonnaise, okay? Um, it's not like regular texture paste. It's not a fluffy marshmallow. It's more like mayo or yogurt. But what's cool about this stuff is it's translucent and it creates a gloss finish. So after I've inked it and I've cleaned off the stencil, you just take your stencil you place it right back over your inked areas so it's lined up. You take texture paste, you take a palette knife, and this one's already done, so I won't do it, but I can, I can do this one. I probably shouldn't, but I will, because I don't even have any tape, but I'm here to show you. I would normally tape this down, or I'd use, oh, I have a piece of media grip. I'm set. Oh. I got it. I was gonna say, I need something to stick it down. There we go. I have my media grip handy. Oh no, not if I have media grip, I don't need tape. Okay, so I got media grip. So now that's gonna hold my paper and that's also going to hold my stencil, right? Cause it's just gonna grip right there. So you could still tape it if you wanted to, but this is gonna be, this is gonna work for me. So you're gonna just take a palette knife. You're gonna take some gloss paste. The idea here is you wanna create like brush stroke okay so yeah i'm not a fan of mayo but uh, oh yeah but i love yogurt so yogurt works for me um so you're just going to take this and you're just going to start spreading this through but and i'll show you i'll try to hold this up uh instead of like creating almost a squeegee effect texture paste is texture so i'm going in different directions so i can leave that striation of color or texture uh, in the color is what I'm trying to say. Meaning I want to see lines. I want to see uh, different build or different layers of the paste. And that's what I love about this viscosity. It's weird to work with that first if you're used to working with like fluffy pastes. Fluffy. 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 So I'm just going right down. And you'll see where that is because it goes on wet. You don't need enough. It should still look translucent to you. Um, but change your direction. I think having a smaller palette knife uh, is is much easier for this because you can see that I'm, I'm able to go in directions and kind of uh, create a dismount, a uh, different surface tension when I'm spreading this around. There we go. Excellent. That's what's there. Cap this up. This will rinse off your stencil, so you're just going to clean your stencil with water uh, while it's wet. So I'll pick this up. It's all about the dismount. I'll put it in my where is that little tray? Ah, oh, perfect. So off camera, just so you know how I clean stencils, I just throw them in a little container of water. That's it. I don't even wipe it off because the water will dissolve all that medium. And then all you have to do is take it out and dry it off. You, you might need to wipe it a little bit, but you don't have to scrub your stencils because that's not, that's not a good deal. So this is what it looks like when you first apply it. So you can see what I mean about the texture that you want to give it if you're going for brush marks, right? Let this dry. This is probably going to take at least 30 minutes or so to dry. It takes a little bit longer. I don't like to speed it up because it creates these little weird wrinkles. Uh, if you have excess and you don't want it, you can wipe it off. Think of this as like dimensional uh, textured, like glossy accents, because when it dries, it will, it will settle a little bit. It won't be as, as heavy as this, but you still get all that texture. So you see how it's not as, it's not as raised as it is right now because it does settle as it dries, but you still get all of those great 
uh, brush marks. And what I love about this is that it really does look like you went in with a different type of paint on there. And now this, because it's already done with, uh, with the paste, this will resist as well. So I, if I ink over this with brown, these colors will stay true because they're sealed in texture paste. So could you do this with clear embossing powder? Yes. Could you do this with resist spray? Yes, there's a many ways that you can create a resist, but in order to create that brush texture, that's why I wanted to show the idea with texture paste. So there you have it.